thank the Department of Agriculture late today, this evening. So I'm not going to waste any time. Uh, I'll ask uh, agenda for today from Kobas. Yes, I'll apologize again on behalf of our committee secretary. He's in the meeting, but unfortunately he doesn't have voice. His voice is horrible, uh, but he'll be fine very soon. Now I will get uh, the contact advisor to give us the agenda for today. Kobas? Kobas? Aska, can you assist me? Yeah, sorry, I, I am here. I just had to unmute my computer and I just didn't want to respond the first time. The agenda today is two meetings of budget and APP starting at 1600 to 1930 would be the briefing by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy on the APP and budget. And then 1930 to 2100 is the debriefing by the Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, Land Reform on their APP and budget. Third item would be consideration and adoption of minutes, followed by the quorum, uh, and a quorum is needed for a vote on those minutes. Those are the three items on the agenda, Chair. Okay. Though we don't have an item for the apologies, uh, I want to check, uh, do we have any apologies? Yes, Chairperson, we've got- No, um, man. <laughs> Mr. Arnold and Mr. Nana have uh, sent in their apologies, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any apology from the side of the department, Honorable Minister? Honorable Minister, do we have any apology from your side? Uh, are we allowed to apologize? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Eh? When you are called upon to come here, uh, how do you apologize? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, all of you. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, I'm not going to waste any time. I'll go straight to the presentation and I'll give to the minister to lead the delegation and then you'll give to the DG. Minister, the platform is yours. Thank you, Member Jusso uh, and honorable members. Um, at eight in the morning, we're in the AMC for vaccines. Yeah, we moved out of that rushing uh, to another meeting uh, to deal with something called caucus. Uh, from caucus, we go to president answering questions in parliament. Now we're here. Now, I'm a health worker by marriage. One of the things I know is that uh, your concentration declines with the uh, length of the day. But where we are, uh, our team is here. It will present the APP and the budget. It is led by the DG himself and he's coming here with a quite a sizable team so that when you ask us difficult questions, we must be able to answer the the, the complicated technical question. Uh, it's a department that is a product of a merger. Uh, we merged it in May 2019, uh, energy and uh, minerals into a single department. We're coming here as one department and we still have one aim that will lead to transformation in South Africa and we lead with economic growth uh, we lead in sustainable development in the mining and energy sector. That's our objective. Um, 
some of those are beginning to show. Um, from quarter three last year, mining is making a positive contribution to economic reconstruction and uh, and uh, reconstruction and recovery plan. Uh, the first quarter of 2021 is also quite good for mining. And that means that we can actually achieve what we are dreaming of, of increasing our contribution to the GDP from eight to 12. That's a dream. And there's nothing wrong with dreaming because it informs your vision. Uh, we, 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 we are an economic department. Uh, sometimes we forget that and think that we are a regulatory department. Uh, we are an economic department. Our performance is not how much and how tight we regulate. It's about how better is uh, the sector performing. So we pay all our attention uh, to, uh, to, the, to the economic growth and sustainability of the department. I'm going to ask the DG to take us to the technical aspects of the APP uh, and the department, the nature of work we're doing. But uh, uh, in energy, we have an objective of making a big contribution to energy generation. If you take what we put on the, on, the, on the objectives of the department, you will see that actually we want to contribute megawatts that are equal to four power stations uh, to the energy. And we're also putting e-electricity, e-exploration as one. Many people who are uh, actual fanatics about beneficiation since this beginning and the end. Uh, don't understand when you talk about exploration as the three. And until you take them through that, exploration is about discovering where minerals are. Uh, only when you know where they are okay, that you can mine. And once you mine, only when you have mined that you can have a metallurgical process of separating minerals from the rocks. Only after that can you talk of beneficiation. So here we are, we're presenting ourselves to the select committee uh, and I'm handing over to the DG. DG, uh, lead the team, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, greetings to yourself, greetings to the chairperson of the select committee, all the select committee members, honorable members and also the team DMRE in attendance and the support staff uh, to parliamentary, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to parliament, uh, not to parliamentary. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister, for the opportunity. Uh, you have covered uh, key areas, Minister. I think I'll just run through. I know that uh, I ran a risk by saying that I would run through the presentation but having to consider the number of slides that we are having for this presentation and also the time that we have been allocated to only have up until half past seven. And so, which means we need to be direct to the issues. We are quite mindful of the fact that uh, when you are dealing with the select committee, you only need to reflect on those areas that uh, are impacting on uh, provinces because uh, their primary mandate is to represent the interest of uh, provinces. Now, in terms of our presentation, uh, can you move to the next slide? We would be uh, presenting, and our presentation is divided into three parts. We have part A, which is the executive summary, and also part B that deals with outcomes, outputs, performance, indicators, and targets per program. And part C, it will be budget uh, allocation, allocation. Now, I just want to reiterate on what the minister just uh, presented, that uh, this uh, APP was uh, prepared under the guidance and leadership of the Honorable Minister as the executive authority of the organization. And all our senior managers participated uh, together with our state-owned entities. 
Now it is also aligned to our strategic plan, SONA commitments, MTSF uh, priorities, as well as economic reconstruction and recovery plan and the national development plan. I must also highlight at this point that our SOE's uh, programs are also aligned to the departmental uh, uh, APP. The minister has covered uh, the issue of the, the vision of the organization. Uh, I just want to highlight also that uh, the, we derive our mandate from the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. We have different uh, pieces of legislation that are also uh, governing us. In terms of, uh, if we can move to the organizational structure, um, we, we have a stable organization. Uh, I think it is too far, I can just uh, wait um, and I will deal with that on a later stage. Maybe at the high level, I can just reflect on that part of the organizational structure. Now, you remember, honorable members, that uh, the minister, uh, it was even uh, before the sixth uh, administration, where he made a commitment of uh, stabilizing the department, where he also confirmed that he will stabilize our state-owned entities. That work has been uh, completed uh, from the side of uh, DMRE. We are proud to appear before the select committee to confirm that uh, the minister has honored his commitment that uh, there shall be no Hollywood uh, in the department. All senior uh, positions at the executive management level, uh, um, you know, closed, and uh, we have people that uh, occupying those positions. No vacancy that uh, we we are having at the moment. Now, can you move to the next slide? Uh, in terms of the entities that are reporting to the department, we have uh, four areas. I mean, we have mining and energy. We also have health and safety. We have regulation and research. Now, those are the entities without going through them that are responsible for those different uh, segments or areas. And these entities are doing very well. There are challenges here and there, but uh, you know, because of the proactiveness from the side of the shareholder, which is the executive authority, we are able to attend to some of the challenges that uh, these uh, entities uh, you know, encounter. And now we are also happy to highlight this fact that uh, we have boards where there are vacancies. It is because of vacancies that have occurred now, but almost 98 to 99, if not 99.9, uh, uh, we have boards in all our entities and the minister is quite proactive in closing you know, those vacancies as and when uh, a need arises. Can you move to the next slide? Uh, here we are just uh, highlighting um, our uh, key initiatives and targets that uh, contribute to the MTSF uh, priorities. Now we have strategic outcomes and I uh, will just go through those uh, outcomes. Without, I mean, with your indulgence, honorable members, uh, it must not be perceived uh, one being disrespectful, but we are also mindful of, of the time that we have been allocated. Now, strategic uh, outcome six, uh, it deals with a functional, efficient and integrated government. There we are also highlighting in terms of uh, priority number one is to build a capable, ethical and developmental state. Now, interventions that you are looking at is to ensure that uh, measures are taken to eliminate wasteful, fruitless and irregular expenditure in the public sector. I think that this is one point that is very uh, critical and so you always want to know about the wasteful, fruitless and irregular expenditure. Now on your far right, you have the targets there uh, that I would not go through each and every one of them, but it is just important to overemphasize the point that 100% uh, elimination of wasteful and fruitless expenditure incrementally by 2024 and also 100% reduction of irregular expenditure incrementally from baseline of 2019 by 2024. And the most important aspect as well is to ensure that unqualified audit opinion for year under review, as you know that uh, there was a little bit of a regress and uh, the minister has been very 
clear to us that uh, you know we must make sure that there is an improvement. And now the issue of uh, the invoices that must be paid within 30 days, uh, we're saying 100%, and so we are doing very well in that regard. Can you move to the next slide, please? And now, priority number two is economic uh, transformation and job creation. We have strategic outcome one there, investing in accelerated inclusive growth. A strategic uh, outcome two is industrialization, localization and exports. Now, those are the specific interventions uh, that we have put in place is to ensure that uh, uh, macroeconomic policy alignment and also coherence to accelerate uh, delivery uh, through transformative innovation, operation Pakisa Mining Lab, mining lab uh, galvanizing growth, investment and also employment creation along the mining value chain and mining related communities. Now we have also set a target uh, that I will not go through. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, still under economic transformation and job creation, uh, strategic uh, outcome three, the yeah, supply of energy. Uh, that's one area that is so critical uh, that we are engaging uh, with in the department uh, at the moment. You will remember the commitment that the minister also made uh, around the promulgation of the RP 2019, and it was done within a very short space of time after he was appointed as the minister. And now, the primary objective of the RP 2019 is to ensure that uh, we diversify energy sources by implementing the approved uh, RP. Uh, security of supply and to diversify liquid uh, fuels to also to ensure that we implement a nuclear built uh, program at scale, scale and uh, pace that the country can afford to ensure security of energy supply. We also have a Quebec uh, nuclear power plant life um, extension and so the work is still underway and so those are the areas that we will be engaging on including uh, the issue of a mineral and petroleum regulation uh, of energy availability factor to ensure constant supply of electricity. Those are key areas that we know that uh, the department uh, through the guidance of the executive authority were making progress. All those targets that we have set for ourselves as a department will make sure that we attain them because that is the you know, objective of this exercise to report about what we are planning for the year uh, that we are in at the moment. And also under MTSF priority number five, that is a special integration, human settlements and local government. Now we have strategic outcome four, which is uh, uh, GHG reduction. And we are also looking specifically at uh, state of geological infra improved. Uh, those are the key strategic outcomes that we are looking at. Now, in terms of the interventions, uh, the clear there, clearly articulated that we need to implement four sectors, a GHG, emission reduction implementation plan, and also to ensure that we develop a, a strategy for acid mine drainage uh, mitigation. And so the work is actually underway. We have started. And so those are the targets that we want to attain. Next slide, please. Uh, Priority number six is uh, social cohesion and safe communities. We have here agreed that we need to improve capacity to deliver services, uh, quality infrastructure, and also integrated uh, public uh, transport to increase household access to basic services. Uh, strategic outcome seven is to ensure that we have a, a diverse, socially cohesive society with a common national identity. Now, there is a specific intervention there, uh, interventions that uh, we need to uh, connect uh, households to the grid in terms of the national electrification plan and also the non-grid connections to households in terms of a national electrification plan. I know that is an area of interest as well for the honorable members because here we are zooming directly 
to our provinces. And so we will be giving a feedback in terms of the work that we'll be uh, doing. I think it is at this point that I would like to invite uh, the head of a strategy to take us through um, you know, different uh, programs. Uh, try to be uh, direct and precise, uh, Mr. Mlauzi, because we still have to in, uh, allow members to ask questions and also the minister must give his uh, closing remarks. And so if we can just try to be uh, quick. Over to you, uh, uh, Chief Director, who is the head of strategy, Mr. Mlauzi. Then uh, the CFO will come in also to take uh, honorable members through the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, DG, honorable minister, honorable chair, as well as honorable members. Uh, I'll take you through in terms of the programs that are executing the APP of the department. There are six. Program number one is administration. Um, and its purpose, it supports the department to fulfill its mandate. In terms of the functions, I won't be going through all of them, but um, uh, you've got the finance there, you've got corporate services, then you've got state-owned entities in it, you've got the office of the director general, but also you've got the one that deals with ICT, which is a, a, a management tool that assists us as um, the organization. The next slide. Here, uh, honorable chair and members, um, it tries to bring back what the DG has presented earlier in terms of how have we then linked ourselves with the, uh, found, with the founding documents, that is the planning frameworks of government starting from the MTSF, which is the implementation plan for the NDP, but also going to the uh, economic recovery plan. Here in within from branch number one, which is administration, uh, it is linked for, to priority number one, capable and ethical and developmental state. On the far right, you can see we also developed the branch outcomes. In other words, we were saying, what is the actual purpose of the branch without actually looking at what the MTSF, as well as the economic recovery is saying. So you can see there, they were able to talk to the manner in which the branches organizes to make sure that we are functional, we are efficient, and we are integrated as a department for the government. But more than all, we make sure that there is governance, which is our regulatory frameworks. There are consolidated branch outcomes there. I'm not going to repeat them. It's just a summary of what is on the far right in the slide. Next slide. Here, DG has hinted on this. These are the planned targets for program one. Um, I'll just have to cite one to say we need to make sure that the unqualified audit opinion for the year under review, we deal with the response action plan. We have actually developed the response action plan to all AG findings which we had in the previous year. And uh, we are making sure that uh, we, 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 we implement all the recommendations that AG has given to us so that there are no occurrences. But also with regard to SOEs, they need to submit their APPs, they need to submit their uh, annual performance plan as well as, as, as their compact plans. And all those must be tabled before the parliament. Next slide. This is program two, which is key for the department because it produces policies that are regulating the industry. So in terms of that, the functions, one of their functions is to manage administration and evaluation for pros pros prospecting my plan targets. These are the plan targets that have been uh, put on the APP. We will do the, the compliance inspections in our service stations. We'll do uh, fuel samples to ensure that uh, our fuels uh, our, are, are not mixed with any other thing untoward. And then, but also we'll make sure that uh, we will issue license applications and those license applications will have a minimum of 50% of historically disadvantaged South African ownership. Uh, there's also an area that speaks to the SLPs as you can see it there. But when you go down, you can see that we'll also do the SLP inspections, we'll conduct those things. But most importantly, we'll do the legal compliance. Program three is the minerals and, and energy policy. Uh, they develop and review minerals energy legislation. 
and they provide support in terms of the functions to uh, manage the dissemination of information, but they also promote development and advice on trends in the mining industry to attract investment. It's just to hint a few of those functions. Next slide. They are also linked to the MTSF uh, on outcome uh, that is, uh, I think it's outcome number two, investing in accelerated inclusive growth. They also have their branch outcomes. And then in terms of the ERRP, you can see there, they are responsible for making sure that there is diversification, diversification of energy sources uh, with, with, within just transition. In this instance, they assist us in developing the frameworks, guidelines, legislations that assist the industry to do its work. Next slide. That is the consolidated branch outcomes of the policy branch. Um, you can see it there, economic diplomacy that promote regional and integration global cooperation. I'm reading the bottom one, number six. And then the first one to say transformed comparative and sustainable mineral energy sectors. It's one of their consolidated outcomes as a branch. Next slide. Um, they are planned targets. There, there will be a clean, a clean fuels two regulations that will be developed. These are legislative frameworks that are sitting in our APP, which are going to be developed, produced, and, 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 and get the placing of approval uh, uh, during this financial year. LPG strategy will also be there. There will also be beneficiation, beneficiation master plan approved. We'll also have a national nuclear regulator amendment bill amongst the rest that will be submitted to cabinet for tabling uh, for, uh, for, for promulgation by parliament. So we've got uh, program three. Uh, there will also be a radioactive management waste fund bill that will be submitted. Gas master plan is among, is amongst them. We also have the, the ERA, which is Electricity Regulation Act. The Just Energy Transition Plan will be there, will also be tabled in Parliament. We'll also deal with issues that relate to carbon offset. And uh, the clean, uh, that will also have an approved clean development mechanism for the CDM project. And we'll also have an energy statistic report pu published. So those are the targets that are sitting in the uh, planning uh, uh, program. Uh, we'll also produce reports uh, that relates to our agreements and the implementation thereof, and also the multilateral strategic partnerships uh, which we have with our um, uh, uh, with other countries. Program four, it's a mine health and safety inspectorate. Um, their purpose is to safeguard the health and safety of mine employees as well as the communities living near or close by the mines. Their functions, one of them is healthy and safety, but also they contribute to skills development and transformation. I will not go through the rest. Next slide. They are also linked chair to the MTSF priority number two. In terms of the outcome, it's, it, it's, it's about investing for accelerated inclusive growth. They have their branch outcomes, as you can see there, to have an improved, streamlined regulatory service delivery, operational health, safety processes, and consolidation across regulators and relevant role players. Uh, ERRP is also uh, one of our areas of focus uh, through this branch to increase mining exploration activity uh, with the aim of increasing 3% expenditure in global exploration. Uh, they have a, a one consolidated branch outcome. Next slide. This is the summary of program three, mine health and safety. They are saying we're gonna reduce 10% occupational fatalities, 5% occupational injuries, 10% occupational diseases, 80% investigations will be done and so on. But most important we'll do 8,000 qualitative inspections uh, in the mining sector. We've got program five, which is the um, electrification program, but also with other programs. They coordinate, monitor energy minerals programs and project. And then in terms of the functions, 
they oversee the, the national electrification program, but they also advance uh, 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 energy efficiency. I'm reading one of the bullets there and ensure integration into mainstream energy supply in South Africa. Next slide. They also take cue from the MTSF uh, in terms of priority number two, and the outcome is that one of um, supply of electricity secured. They have their branch outcomes there, as you can see them. And then they also link to another priority number four, which is spatial integration, human settlement, and local government uh, issues that uh, talk to geological infrastructure, but also improve capacity to deliver basic services um, in the uh, um, electricity space. Uh, as far as ERRP, they are also there in terms of making sure that we do have diversification of energy sources within just transition context, as well as uh, to make sure that uh, we do implement the IRP. Uh, this is the consolidation of the branch outcomes, which we can skip. Next slide. These are their planned targets. Um, the first one um, uh, is to make sure that um, um, uh, we purchase agreement between ESCOM um, is conducted or concluded for the 2000 megawatts, which has already been pronounced. Um, chair and members are aware about it, but there's also the next one which speaks about the 6.8 megawatts from renewable energy. We'll issue RFPs for 3000 megawatts from gas. We'll also issue RFP for 1.5 megawatts from coal. So this is the types of energy mix that are all put together in terms of their targets. But they'll also deal with issues that relates to uh, energy energy savings. As you, as you can see there at the bottom, uh, we'll, we will have 0 0.5 terawatt per hour savings realized and verified from the energy efficiency demand side management projects and as well as the 0 0.194 terawatt savings grant, participa grant part in with participating municipalities. We've got a nuclear branch, uh, which is responsible to manage the nuclear uh, uh, energy industry and control nuclear material. So they, there we have their functions uh, to implement nuclear policies, but also they control nuclear material equipment and related technologies and implement all matters related to the nuclear non-proliferation. Next slide. They are also linked to the MTSF, uh, specifically to priority number two, and then uh, the outcome, the supply of electricity secured. They have their branch outcomes on the far right, also linked to ERRP, preparation for nuclear build. And then that will, uh, in terms of their branch outcomes to improve security of supply, at the bottom there is consolidation of their uh, branch outcomes. Next slide. These are the uh, plan targets, which has already been alluded in the former slide, but they also do feasibility report for the establishment of the Central Interim Storage Fund, and this will be submitted for approval this year to cabinet. They also issue uh, authorization applications, and these applications are processed within the prescribed timeline of eight weeks and they, they deal with the nuclear safeguard compliance reports as well. Next slide. Um, on this one, a chairperson minister is the area that will then have to be uh, dealt with by the uh, chief financial officer, Ms. Chetty. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, Honorable Minister, DG, colleagues and others present. I'll present the MTF budget over the MTF period commencing in 2021-22, that's this financial year, which commenced on 1 April, 22-23 and 23-24. That's the three years covered in the MTF period. The budget for the year under review, that's 21-22, is 9.1 billion. In the 2021 year, 
we originally started the budget with 9.3 billion, but the budget was reduced through special reductions uh, in response to the COVID uh, pandemic. And we had also contributed towards other priorities in, uh, at National Treasury. We, our budget was reduced by 1.5 billion, leaving us with a revised budget in the year that ended 31 March 2021 of 7.5 billion. So we're comparing 7.5 billion for the last financial year to this year of 9.1 billion. It sounds like a big increase of 21%, but I had to give you that context because we had a reduction in the year. 22-23, we have 10.2 billion. The increase from 21-22 to 22-23 is 11.1%. And in the last financial year, the last outer year, 10.2 increases to 10.4, which is about 2.27%. The increases are coming from a low base, but the two outer years are still indicative. When the new budget cycle opens in July, we resubmit our budget proposals and these figures could change. So at this point in time, it's still indicative. You can move to the next slide, please. Chairperson and members, it's on this graph, it shows the department has 29.8 billion over the MTF period. Taking the lion's share of the budget allocation is 83%, which is uh, to transfers uh, to our implementing agents and our entities. Goods and services is 6%, which is a fairly small, about, small budget for our operational costs for such a large department. And see, uh, compensation of employees is 11%. And then you get capital payments for capital assets, which you see is 0%. Uh, it's 0% chairperson because it's a small amount of the total allocation of 29 billion. Uh, it's the budget for capital assets is 61 million, and the percentage is well below 0.5%, and it's rounded down, and that's the reason you see a 0%. But the actual allocations is on the top line, which shows the figures. You can move to the next slide, please. On the slide, uh, chairperson and members, compensation of employees for this financial year, that's 21-22 is 1 billion. And if you look in the outer two years, it, the budget increases marginally. And the, the compensation to employees is the third largest cost driver, amounting to 3.1 billion over the MTF period. However, the budget ceiling remains constant. Providing for this, uh, there must be some provision for inflation related adjustments. And this calls for some reprioritization of the compensation budget. A downward headwood, headcount management is necessary. However, Chairperson and members, I want to point out that this does not mean there's going to be retrenchment. Through natural attrition, there are going to be vacancies. And when the vacancies do arise, there is a prioritization exercise done by the department. And these uh, vacancies are filled uh, more towards the line function and the support function is always reviewed, but the priority is always placed on line function in terms of filling their vacancies. Through the uh, headcount uh, head that will have to be decreased over the MTF period, the service delivery and the achievement of the targets will not be compromised in this process. Goods and services, it's 6% of the budget. In this financial year, we've got 631.4 million. And you can see in 22-23, it goes down to 625 million. And 23-24, it goes down again to 577.3 million. But as I indicated earlier on, the outer two years could change. But here, the, the, the discussions with National Treasury and all the branches, uh, the message is clear from National Treasury. We've got to do things more efficiently and exercise more financial prudence over our control in the expenditure. Once we roll out programs, the cost incurred has to be done, done so in an efficient manner. The next line is transfers and subsidies, which is 7.4 billion. 
it goes up in the following year to 8.5 billion, and then it goes up again to 8.8 .8 billion. And uh, the breakdown is below. Chairperson, the, the first two, the integrated national electrification program takes 5 billion. Transfers to our public entities is 2.1 billion. And most of these transfers are controlled through signed agreements. And the details for this uh, transfers I will provide in the next slide. Can I please move to the next slide? Next slide. Thank you. Chair and members, the first uh, transfer in the breakdown of the electrification program, that's a 5 billion. The first one is ESCOM grant, 2.8 billion. INEP municipality grant, 2 billion. These are controlled, as I've mentioned, through some signed agreements between the department and the implementing agents. Uh, deliverables are verified before the next tranche is sent to these entities or implementing agents. Slow moving projects or slow moving implementation at the municipalities are also identified and engagements with National Treasury is also undertaken by the department. And when corrective action has been implemented, the following transfers take place accordingly. Various institu institutions that uh, INEP non-grid, which is 232 million, Chair, this procurement process is controlled by the department. And each year we have a different allocation to the various uh, uh, provinces. Under public entities, there's 2.1 billion. And that's a breakdown of all the entities, the public entities that receive funding for, uh, from us as a department. And I'll provide reasons for this transfers in the next slide. Chair, the transfer payments are expected to increase at an average annual rate of 13.3% from 7.49 billion in 2122 to 8.8 .8 billion in 2324, mainly due to a relatively low base in 2021, which I mentioned was due to the uh, once off reductions in the budget. The National Electrification Program continues to be the department's largest spending area with a total of 17.3 billion expected to be spent on INAP ESCOM. Over the three years, you're going to be spending 10.28 billion. INAP municipalities over the three years is 6.3 billion. INAP non-grid over the three years is 719.8 million. The department's second largest spending area is funding public entities, and I will provide some reasons there. Next slide, please. Can you move to the next slide? Thank you. South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, that's NEXA. Uh, the, the entity will receive 2.9 billion, of which 626.6 .6 million is earmarked for the decommissioning and decontamination of the old strategic nuclear facilities and a once-off allocation of 20 million in 2021-22 for the prep work for the new multi-purpose reactor. Mintech receives 1.3 billion, and this 1.3 billion includes funding for operational reasons and capital expenditure. Included in the 1.3 billion is 366.5 million, earmarked for the rehabilitation of derelict and onless mines, and 8.4 million for implementing the expanded public works program. Council for Geoscience, 1.2 billion over the NTF period. Included in that amount is 61.2 million to conduct research for the rehabilitation of derelict and ownerless mines. We also fund some of the operations and capital expenditure at the Council for Geoscience. Petroleum Agency of South Africa, that's PASA, 416.6 million. We provide operational funding to that air entity. Uh, South African Nuclear Energy Development Institute, 237.6 million, and that is for operational funding. South African Diamond and Precious Metals Regulator, 188 million, it's for operational funding. 
and RADI, which is our Radioactive Waste Disposal Institute, 150 million for operational reasons. And the National Nuclear Re Regulator gets 140.3 million. This is for operational and a little bit of capital as well. Mine Health and Safety Council, 14 million, of, and it's for operational funding. Chair, the next uh, slide. This shows you the, um, the international membership fees that the department uh, pays to various agencies. In this financial year, we have 31.5 million to the various agencies that is listed below. So those are all the membership fees that we pay. But Chair, the, the department is undertaking a review of all these international agreements to ensure we receive value for money. So in the outer two years, if those changes do occur, you would see those changes being effected in those in the 22, 23 and 23, 24 financial year. Below that is the other, which is 259.6 million. And it's broken down into energy efficiency and demand side management grant. That's 220.8 million. IDC, that's small scale mining projects. Uh, it's 26.2 million. IDC controls the funding for the department. Then it's water management solutions of 6.6 .6 million. And there's CETAS, which is 1.2, and Mining Qualifications Authority of 2.1 million, giving us a total of 7.4 billion to transfers. Chair, the energy efficiency and demand side management, which was 220 million over the MTF period. These are funds that are transferred to the municipalities to upgrade the municipal infrastructure to be energy efficient. In facilitating the promotion of small scale mining in the country, the IDC is the implementing agent, which I showed you it was 26.6 million in this financial year. The remaining transfers will be mainly paid to multinational organizations, which I have covered. Chair, in all of the transfers, which is about 7.4 billion for this financial year, our discussions with National Treasury and the entities uh, discussions were held that the entities have to become self-sustainable by exploring different commercial activities to, uh, to increase their revenue uh, streams. Over reliance on the fiscus was discussed with all entities and a sizable amount is transferred annually to our entities. And Chairperson, a lot of work has been done with uh, the entities across uh, the spectrum at DMRE. The rationalization of these entities, the effect thereof, will only be seen in the outer two years of the MTF period, that is 22, 23, and 23, 24, when we will see the real effect on the figures. This slide here in front of you is just breaking down the budget of 9.1 billion over our different programs. And I've explained compensation of employees of 1 billion. Under goods and services, it's 631 million. Uh, when the targets were presented now, some of those, the expenditure for those targets are included under goods and services. And just to give some idea of what we cover under goods and services, if you look at program one, which is 274 million, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it includes the ICT infrastructure refresh program, uh, the implementation of the licensing system, program two, which is uh, minerals and petroleum regulation, 62.3 million. In the main chairperson, the program covers a lot of uh, sampling and testing of petroleum products. Program three, mining minerals and energy policy development is 54.2 million. And included there, Chair, is the design and development of the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act, uh, procurement of mining and and energy data for publications and research. Uh, program four is Mine Health and Safety Inspectorate, 35 million. In the main, this uh, branch will take care of mine inspections, amongst other programs, other projects as well. Program five is 194.6 million. Included in this uh, goods and services amount, is solar water heating projects for the continued implementation of the program, the integrated uh, electrification master plan, technical audits, 
measurement and verification of savings from the energy efficiency and demand side management projects. Lastly, nuclear energy regulation and management has 11 million and uh, included in that 11 million, there's a gateway review of the feasibility report for centralized interim facilities, a review of the draft decommissioning policy. Chair, these are just some of it, but there's not all of the projects that we undertake under goods and services. Subsidies and transfers are covered. Capital assets are for tools of trade. Chairperson, on this slide is an overview of the material allocations. All I would like to point out is the yellow line, the first line. The graph, the park, uh, the, the graph actually shows the budget from 2017-18 to 2023-24. So it covers various financial years, and you can see the increases and decreases that happened. But more importantly, if we look at the 2021 year, you can see a, a big dip. And that dip is due to the reduction of our budget last year, which I mentioned was for the COVID pandemic and the other prioritization that was done by National Treasury, which was we had our budget re reduced by 1.5 billion. But it picks up in the slightly in the outer years. If you can move to the next slide, please. Chair, in closing, the decrease in the 2021 financial year is due to the funds that was redirected. The primary focus will continue to be on the National Electrification Program with the projected expenditure of 5.1 billion in 21-22. Transfer payments to public entities is projected at 2.1 billion to fund operations and, and to implement specific projects of which 44.5% will be received by NEXA for both its operational as well as decommissioning and decontamination of all strategic nuclear facilities. Included in the transfers to Mintech and Council for Geoscience is 140.4 million for um, research work around the rehabilitation of Derelict and Onanus mines. Compensation of employees is 1 billion and it's specifically and exclusively appropriated for employee rem uh, remuneration. Chair, if in the, in the year that's this financial year, if we have any savings or unspent funds under compensation of employees, that funding cannot be utilized in any other area of the department. The unused funds has to be surrendered to National Treasury at the time of year end closure. Lastly, goods and services, 634.4 million will be utilized for the various uh, goods and services that will be procured for the department. With that, I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. DG, are you done on your side? Yes, Honorable Minister. Thanks, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, it's back to you, Matthew. Okay, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister and DG and your team. Now I give to members to ask questions. Honorable members, questions? Uh, I'll start with Honorable Winningwenya, Honorable BB, and then Honorable Matibe will follow. Uh, thanks, uh, Chairperson, and also thank you for the presentation and good evening, Minister. Can you hear me, Chair? Hello, Hello good evening. Are you hear me, Chair? Yes, we yes, can hear you to that. We can hear you. Nyabonga Chepesin, Minister. Can I speak? Mama. First and foremost, let me welcome the performance of the department. Mam, Mam Gwen. Yes, Chair. Yes, now Rahudra. Okay, thanks, ma'am. 
Uh, first and foremost, let me welcome the performance of the department in receiving unqualified audit outcome during the previous financial year. I hope the department will put action plan in place to address funding and concern issuing by the auditor general, not to reoccur in the current financial year. Honorable Chairperson, my first question is based on the national gas master plan. I have seen from APP that the department will develop a gas master plan. The question is whether this plan will contribute to the development of the SADC regional gas plan. And if yes, can the department elaborate on that? The second question, Chair, is on community development and the social license. Social and labor plan investment, investment is also becoming a challenge. The question is whether the department has any intervention plan to address mining companies and investors who do not take communities serious but not prioritize social labor project. Lastly, Chair, the question is on allocation of the budget to entities of the department. The department's uh, second largest spending area is funding public entities. And we heard that about 6,6 .6 million will be allocated to entities over the medium term. How did these entities perform performed in terms of the audit outcome report conducted by the audit gen Auditor General? Can we get a specific performance audit report of each public entities or audit outcomes? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Ngwenya. Uh, by the way, we have the, invited the provincial legislature there on our meeting. If they do have questions, they can ask. They are allowed to ask questions. Honorable okay. uh, Bibi. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to the minister and the DDG and the team. Uh, thank you very much for the detailed uh, presentation. Um, I'll just go straight to the questions. Chairperson, my first question will be on program two, uh, whereby it says in terms of the number of rights and permits issued to historical disadvantaged um, controlled entities. Um, how many such applications are received and what percentage of the total pool of application does it represent? And also how many of the applications are from mining affected uh, communities assisted by the government to enter the mining value chain? And my second question, uh, Chairperson, will be on program three, uh, whereby it says, um, what, process, what processes will be um, put in place to ensure that mining communities are included in the process of developing a small scale farming? And uh, the last program what? that I have a question to is program five. That's the last one. Um, to the department, um, the international electricity production is rapidly moving away uh, from coal, uh, oil and gas use. Now, how confident is the department uh, that significant investment uh, in the infrastructure needed to exploit oil and gas in South Africa will be financially viable. 
and also how much is the expected investment required to produce oil or gas uh, from the reserves located this far? Last one, Mamte uh, Chairperson, uh, South Africa continues to struggle uh, with poor air quality in provinces where coal power stations are located. Is it not necessary uh, to consider alternative uh, power sources with greater agency? Uh, cleaner energy use is also necessary to reach more ambitious emission standards proposed to signatories of the Paris Agreement. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Bibi. Honorable Smith. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, thank you, Honorable Minister. I hope um, uh, that you still on. Sorry, I, I had some um, internet depth for a moment, so I was off for for a short while. Um, uh, I've got quite a few questions. I've got some questions directly for the minister itself as well. Uh, minister, we we firstly we saw um, you know in the in the media. Uh, that there is a, a, a squabble between uh, uh, your department, or I don't know if, whether it's the department or yourself, and a, um, a, a service provider for, for uh, renewable energy. Um, so um, I would just like to get some more details on, you know, what is that uh, uh, conflict about uh, and what's that, because apparently um they are it's it's a matter that uh, that is going towards the courts so within the limits of what what can be discussed um the second uh, question i have is um i would like to know the status of the um SEZ, uh, development you know with the uh, coal mining and whatever around the messina uh, area uh, so there's a whole lot of development and how is the department involved with that um, budget? Honorable, Smith. Honorable Smith. Honorable Smith. He's present in the he's meeting, lost. but he cannot talk. We cannot hear yeah, him. He's lost his connection. He's okay. lost connection. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, I hope I don't get uh, choked like uh, Honorable Smith. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, good evening to the Minister and the Madekwa Nabo Minister. Um, we. <laughs> uh, the Madekwa Nabo. Um, I, I think. I, I, I've, I've looked at the targets and uh, uh, to the DG, maybe because of time, we could not reflect much on the plan targets that were put in, in line with uh, what we have achieved in the previous uh, financial, financial year. I think it will be important that uh, that kind of engagement is done uh, in, so that whatever targets that we have put, we have benchmarked them with the progress that we have made in the, in the previous uh, financial, financial year. I, 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 I also have seen DG, the compensation of employees is, is at the same rate. Uh, I don't know as whether, whatever negotiations that you will have with your employees will it be covered within that same rate that uh, is there in the MTF uh, period. And uh, how are you dealing with that? And, and another area that I think we should dissect more is on goods and services, because uh, 
they are just indicated there is quite important that uh, we 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 have uh, we dissect declining scale of of, of the budget uh, in line with the goods and services so it's wide decline last uh, point that I would want to make is on the national uh, uh, electrification program. You remember, remember DG, when you came and requested that you are cutting the budgets uh, uh, because of COVID, our plea was that uh, whatever reallocation because it is quite important in our provinces and municipalities that uh, they receive uh, um, those uh, 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 electrification uh, projects, grid and, 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 and non-grid. So in, in line with the budgets that you have put forward, uh, CFO, uh, is that uh, reallocation that we, we put forward when when there were reallocation because of the COVID and the, the expenditure reduction? Has it been done in line with the way in which it was uh, reduced uh, per province? Uh, previously, you had indicated how much reduction has been done per province and per uh, municipal area. and. Uh, I was just checking whether when you are reallocating, is it in line with the percentage that has been done in terms of the reduction? Uh, I will pause there for, for, for now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Matibe. Honorable Smith, can you continue? Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. My apology, I don't know what happens with my network. Um, I okay. Let me let me restart that last question that I was busy with, uh, uh, Honourable Minister. In terms of the Kuburg power power station uh, with nuclear energy uh, in the Western Cape, um, I would like to hear. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of the lifespan of of this um, uh, power station. Um, as far as I understand, it is getting to the end of, of the lifespan and there is uh, mention of plans to extend the lifespan to spend uh, uh, you know, money on doing that. So I would like to know how much is being budgeted uh, for, uh, uh, you know, um, for the Kuburg uh, power station to extend the lifespan. And uh, over over which financial years uh, will that uh, take place, or uh, you know, will it be in the next financial year, or over the next five years, for that matter? Um, uh, then the other thing, uh, honourable minister, I would like to know is in terms of um, the 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 relationship between um, mining communities and the municipality um, and uh, the mines themselves. Um, you know, I'm, I'm myself, I'm coming from a, a, a town and an area where there's a, a high mine, mine activity uh, with the um, uh, platinum reef around there and, and many other minerals, obviously. And, um, you know, we came across a lot of conflict uh, amongst uh, or between communities and the mines. And a lot of times, uh, you know, in terms of the social, uh, um, uh, uh, social labor plans and social responsibility, where they spend uh, money or allocate money towards, uh, you know, uh, spending towards those local communities. Uh, that it's not always aligned uh, with the IDPs of local municipalities. And, and I, I think this is a general problem right through uh, the country. Um, and and I, would, I would like to understand how is the department planning or 
already in that maybe I hope that's the case um, in uh, being involved in helping to to solve this problem so that uh, you know the communities get the best out of that social labor plans but it also aligns that there's no duplication uh, in terms of spending by municipalities uh, and and the mine in terms of infrastructure. Um, because sometimes, you know, there is already certain infrastructure and then it gets, at the end of the day, it gets funded by, by, the, by the mine and then the money goes somewhere else from the municipality. So I, I just want to understand how is your department assisting in, in getting that right with the, with the uh, social labor plans of, of the mines. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you very much, <coughs> Honorable Smith. Uh, let me say to the department, let me welcome the greenhouse gas uh, reduction efforts set out uh, by the departmental annual performance plan. As it continues towards the country nation effort and international agreement on climate change, such as a Paris Agreement, Honorable Minister. Uh, can the department provide details on four carbon offset projects? Specifically, what are the target uh, offset amount? Where will this be implemented in relation to areas considered to associating with the green, uh, greatest uh, emission activities? Uh, my second question in its on program three on mining minerals and energy policy development. Will this the uh, 13.73 reduction in budget allocation affect the newly proposed greenhouse gas reduction development of policy? Those are the two questions uh, that I wanted to ask. I'll give back to you, uh, Honorable Minister, and your team. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson and members, uh, I will start uh, by giving the, the team an opportunity to answer the technical question that will come at the end. Uh, DJ and your team. Uh, NCOC, Honorable Minister. Uh, I'm just trying to, okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, we will allocate the DDGs and we'll come at the end. We will start with DDG Makubela uh, to be followed by DDG Nwabe, uh, DDG Mbele, and uh, Chief Financial Officer will come in. And lastly, it will be uh, DDG Mbambo. Uh, you may proceed, uh, DDGs, in that order. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Uh, good evening, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, DG, and uh, uh, attendants of the meeting. Uh, the questions that I'm going to be dealing with uh, are related to program two. Um, and uh, the, uh, the first one I think is on social and labor plan. Uh, in terms of uh, our processes, let me firstly say that uh, the implementation of social and labor plan uh, remains a challenge. It remains a challenge in the fact that uh, there are those uh, companies that do not quite uh, fulfill their obligations. Uh, that is a fact. And for those then, uh, the challenge for them comes when they have to renew their rights because if they have not implemented uh, their commitments in terms of the social and labor plan, it then becomes very difficult for, for them to get approval uh, to either extend uh, or to renew their, their rights. So, so that is a challenge that we're facing. 
However, we do issue uh, non-compliance notices when they do not uh, comply. Uh, you know, wherever we find them during uh, the inspections that are conducted uh, by the team. The alignment with the IDPs, I think, uh, is also an issue that we're looking at. How have we responded? What we have done now through the approval of the DG and the minister is that we have a, a directorate now that is going to focus on a social and labor plan uh, uh, to make sure that we are able to focus on this area of work uh, in order to make sure that uh, there is a, a benefit to, to communities. The consultations um, you know, become a, a challenge. I think we did a brief the portfolio committee the, when we last went that uh, especially during COVID, the consultations, uh, physical consultations uh, became a, a challenge. A and that is something that we still have to overcome, especially given the restrictions that are there. Then on the question of the, the split on prospecting uh, or split between HDSA and non-HDSA, we can say uh, quite uh, emphatically that the majority of applications on prospecting are from majority HDSA-owned companies. Uh, but that changes when you come to applications for, for, for mining rights. Um, and that then uh, is a function of the level of investment that would be required uh, to actually um, you know, move into mining, but uh, we we are convinced that uh, on prospecting, all of the I mean, the majority of the applications that we process, they uh, come from uh, HDSA majority-owned companies. Uh, I think that is uh, perhaps the, then the, the the last issue is on the question uh, on the conflicts. Now, this is a matter that we even uh, as, as uh, late as this morning, we discussed uh, with the team, but also with the Minerals Council. There they are conflict uh, in, in mining uh, areas. And these are basically because of a number of issues. One, where you get uh, people in those communities who want to benefit to the exclusion of those communities. And I think that is a, a, a challenge that we need to overcome, where people want to become representatives of the communities who want to benefit to the exclusion of the broader community. That inevitably leads to a, a conflict uh, later on because the right beneficiaries then begin to complain to say, but who are you talking to? This is not the representative um, of our community. So those are some of the challenges that uh, we, we need to, to deal with. And you find that where there are most uh, challenges is where there are conflicts even within the municipality itself. Then you find that uh, the, the community then where there is lack of delivery they then uh, expect, and perhaps rightly so in some instances, that the, the mining uh, house in that community must then uh, fill in the gaps where the municipality is actually not uh, functional. I would leave it there for now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Excuse Okay. Good evening, Chair and Honorable Members, Minister, DG and colleagues. I'll respond to the question uh, by Honorable Nguenya on the guest master plan. And um, the question by Honorable Medisa on, on, on carbon offset. 
<laughs> the gas master plan that we are currently developing will basically contain, it's a framework that will contain broad policy statements on how South Africa as a country will develop and expand the gas industry in a nutshell. That's what um, will be contained in the gas master plan. And I must also say that it will be supplementary to the to the gas amendment bill that a minister will be introducing in parliament. I think it was um, uh, included in the, in, in the parliamentary schedule on Friday, the 30th of April. So this master plan will basically be in support of, 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 of um, the gas um, amendment uh, bill. And then the question, um, on, on the carbon offsets project. These are projects that um, are geared towards um, the reduction of, of, of greenhouse gas emissions and they vary. Some projects, for example, by municipalities would be projects um, around um, waste disposal sites where they now um, come to us with projects to say they intend to use the, the gas that comes out of the, 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 um, the waste disposal sites for generation of electricity, for example. Some would be by private companies who would be able to show us technically that um, they've improved their technology in their operations such that they now emitting less um, a, 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 a greenhouse gases. Others would be, for example, where they um, self-generate power using um, renewable sources because ultimately it means they consume less coal generated uh, power from ESCOM. And there's their a small contribution towards the reduction of, 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 of greenhouse gases, not just carbon, but carbon is also there. So those are the type of projects that um, we receive and we monitor. We have um, colleagues who do go out and they do uh, inspections and do verifications and um, where the projects are located. Honorable Bibi, I didn't quite get the question on small scale, the participation of communities. I think you said on, in the small scale fund, I, was, I'm, I couldn't get that one. Um, so I'm not sure whether it's for us at, at the policy level or it was directed to DJ Jimbel. Thanks, DJ. Thanks, Chair. DJ. It is better. Yes. Um, good evening, um, honorable chairperson, honorable members, uh, honorable minister, DG, and colleagues. Um, I think DG, I will respond to. Maybe I should start. There was a question on air, air quality, and the question was that: Is it uh, not necessary to consider? Um, moving to alternates with, with greater agency. I think um, the way one would want to respond to this is that there is a plan to address uh, climate and environmental issues um, by implementing um, a number or by introducing cleaner uh, forms of energy. Um, as to the agency to move from the current sources to the new one, I think it's, it's, it's a function of a business case. I think one of the considerations that I'm aware of that ESCOM is looking at with specific plants that they have challenges with is that they, they are weighing the cost of um, attending to the problem relative to the cost of trying to bring in um, a new technology, but taking into account um, the implication on um, jobs and, and local um, economic development. So it is a consideration, but um, that consideration um, uh, takes into account the necessary business case and the um, local and economic impact. 
the second question that um, I would respond to, there was a question honorable, I think by, asked by Honorable Matibe on um, INEP that last year we had a cut by National Treasury and as part of that process, we, we reduced um, budgets or, or allocations to various provinces and uh, did we reallocate on the same basis? Um, yes, um, the, the, one of the key things that we look at in our allocation um, in terms of the applications that we get from municipalities is the backlog. We always prioritize municipalities where there is a high number of backlog and we've done exactly that. But what we also look at when we do that, we look at performance by municipalities. Uh, for example, if municipality is still struggling to implement a project where we had funded them, the likelihood of putting money into that municipality is very minimal. We would rather actually go and put it into or allocate it to a municipality where there is uh, progress. Otherwise, you, you have money stuck in the system and the service not uh, uh, delivered. So yes, um, the allocations they uh, take into account the fact that we took away money from certain municipalities. But I think it must also be remembered that the priority, the, 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 the process that was followed when the money was uh, reallocated um, also looked at performance. So we always uh, look at performance of the municipality uh, to implement uh, the program. But even the readiness on, on site, you remember that one of the reasons at the time that we gave uh, or, or one of the explanations that we gave at the time was around municipalities where we could see that uh, the houses that they intend to electrify, there had been delays. So we then redirected the money somewhere else. But if those houses were ready now, um, you'd find that yes, we, we have allocated to those municipalities uh, if they had uh, applied again. Uh, thanks, DG. I will leave it here. <coughs> uh, thanks, DG. Uh, the question under compensation of employees, this is, um, is, there isn't much uh, increase or there's a marginal increase between the different financial years over the MTF period. Yes, it's true. Uh, as I explained, Chairperson and members, uh, Treasury implemented a ceiling on the compensation of employees, reason being the public sector wage bill is the highest cost driver in many uh, national departments. So as part of the merger, we are also expected to see some cost containment in that area. And this is managed, uh, Chair and members, uh, oh, through the natural attrition process. Through the natural attrition process. And when vacancies do arise, they are prioritized to areas that are most, that mostly services, um, the service delivery areas and those line function branches. So it will be managed through that process. And uh, before vacancies are filled, there are in-depth discussions that are held at the department. Goods and services, uh, there has been, they was, at the moment, it looks like the budget is reducing. And those two years, when they do reduce, the, those figures are still indicative. The new budget process for every financial year starts in July. And in that negotiation with National Treasury, we look at the changes that should be effected, new initiatives or any other adjustments that needs to be negotiated or discussed with National Treasury, we do submit those for consideration. So, but in the main... Uh, Chairperson and members, with the merger, we are expected to see some cost containments in this area as well. There has to be better ways in doing uh, our projects and rolling out our many projects that we have. We should be able to see some cost savings given the merger as well. Uh, I think the INEP one was responded to, Chairperson. The last one, uh, Cooper, the budget for this project is out at ESCOM. Uh, I think I'm done. Thank you, DJ and Chair. Good evening, uh, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members and the Honorable Minister and the colleagues. Yes, uh, I think I'm going to deal with a question around uh, the Quebec, uh, the, uh, which was raised by Honorable 
Member Smith, the CFO has already uh, clarified that uh, the budget for the Quebec uh, Life Extension resides with ESCOM. However, as a department, our role is to uh, monitor the implementation of the life extension of the Quebec. Uh, honorable members would know that Quebec uh, nuclear power station is a, an integral part of uh, the electricity generation system for the country. Uh, the, the plant has been operational for more than 30 years. And uh, the design life of the plant uh, would reach its end uh, by uh, July 2024. And uh, currently work is underway to extend the Quebec uh, power plant by an additional 20 years uh, subject to regulatory approval. So what the department is doing is it's monitoring the implementation of the project uh, on a quarterly basis to provide policy uh, direction and certainty, and also to ensure that uh, it provides necessary regulations at a policy level. And ESCOM is the one that is executing the project in that regard to ensure that there is a security of uh, energy supply in the country, knowing that Quebec is an important part. So that work is currently underway Three steam generator has already been delivered uh, in September last year, and work is, is, is in progress, and the department continue to monitor it. It engages with ESCOM, the Department of Public Enterprise, to ensure that it provides necessary support for the project. But the budget part of it is uh, managed by ESCOM. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the DGs. Um, I will just touch on one point or question from honorable members around uh, CZ. Uh, the work is still underway. As you know that, I mean, we have uh, good projects that will be taking place there. They relate to um, the coal washing plant and also, um, you know, the cooking plant as well as iron ore plant, uh, stainless steel plant and the federal manganese uh, uh, plant as well. And so the work is still underway. As you know, a project of that magnitude, you need to comply with all regulatory requirements. I mean, you know, you have to comply with the environmental impact assessment. And so those studies are still uh, ongoing. And there is also an effort as well to expedite uh, the process in finalizing. I think what we can confirm at this stage is that uh, we are making progress and the commitment is still there from the side of uh, government. And as the Department of uh, Mineral Resources and Energy, we're also participating because we have those um, areas that are afford uh, specifically within uh, our department. I would like to hand over to the Honorable Minister to. Uh, uh, give us the guidance as well. Over to you, Your Excellency. Yeah. Thank you, DJ. Uh, the team has touched on all the technical questions. My uh, moment here. Yes. Uh, I want just to talk to some of the issues that have political implications. Mining companies and investors who do not take communities seriously. One of the things that we do in the department regularly uh, is to visit communities, talk to people. Uh, and we discover that when you go there, you don't only deal with the uh, pollution of the environment and water. You also deal with young people who want to be in, in entrepreneurs in those communities. And we pull them together with the mining companies to have a discussion and come to an agreement on how to handle one another. So we do that regularly. Uh, our view is that we are in the transition between mining companies that had no link 
with communities and mining companies that need a social permit now to operate. So we're in that space. Uh, we're also putting up a, a issue of grade in those communities. You know, went to one area where we're ending over a clinic, uh, which was uh, built by SLP. And we said for local, uh, 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 local procurement for the service of that handover. Let's get local community. You know, three companies that came with me, these people who sit in the meeting. Now, when that happens, you must know that you are far from getting it right. Because they sit in the meeting, they bring their own bids, and they want to adjudicate over their own bids. It can't be correct. So, that quite a, it's a very complicated space there. Let me leave that. Uh, I thought that uh, DDG Makubela would answer the question of the number of rights and permits uh, that have been given out to black entrepreneurs. I'm leaving it. The movement from coal and gas. You know, South Africa is a restrained country. You know that very strange country, uh, in that they think that they can just switch off coal and move to renewables and everything will go well. We don't take time to look into complication of that approach in Germany. Why Germany has delayed the closure of their coal mines and coal power station uh, to 2038 is because they appreciated that they move to, to, to renewables and only discover at that point that they don't have the base load. Now, South Africa must actually convince itself that a transition from high uh, carbon emission to low carbon emission is going to be a journey. Now, the mixture of technologies is going to be important and we're doing that. That's why RP is a mixture of, of, of technologies. Uh, the coal power station, uh, even those coal power stations, uh, you don't go, you know, when ESCOM said they are having a plan to close eight of those 16 power stations, we asked a question which were engaging with them. Uh, right, they are called, uh, okay, close the power station. But is there any plan, a built plan, to replace that capacity? Because if we don't have a built plan, to, to, to make up for that uh, capacity, we are going to be in trouble. Uh, Honorable Smith asked me with a squabble with a service provider with renewable energy. No, I read the newspapers, they say a losing bidder wants to take a mandash to court, a losing bidder. Now that qualification is very important in the sense that it's a bidder who want to us to give the bid to him irrespective of the outcome of the assessment. So we'll deal with that issue uh, as we go to court. Uh, but the rest of the matter is that the assessment has been done thoroughly by independent adjudicators. Uh, many people have tested that and uh, found nothing wrong in the process. I hope you will found anything wrong. But the rest of the matter is that in that space, the energy, uh, anybody who loses a bit is likely to take you to court. And I've, discovered, I, I've, I've described it as occupational hazard, memories. It's an occupational hazard. In that space, mm -hmm. you're dealing with energy. People, they think that they have a right to make money. So if they lose a bit, they take you to court. Uh, what have I left out? Uh, SLPs and I, IDPs. We have been asking uh, municipalities to align SLPs and IDPs. But what we discover is that when you do that, municipalities want to use SLPs to do, to implement IDP problems, programs. It can't work that way. You know, I'm a, I'm a DDM champion 
We go there, we say, okay, guys, give us key impact projects that we can take to the DDM. They give us a total of 156 program, projects. 156 projects they give it to us. And we sent them back and we said, no, we are not going to take over the responsibility of municipalities. Give us not more than 10 impact projects in the five municipalities. And we want to focus on that, mobilize resources, work together in that. Um, but municipalities don't want to work together. That's the first thing. Very difficult to get them work together. All of them think that the DGM is about taking over their responsibility. And we say, no, let's focus on impact projects. So that is where you align your SLPs and ITPs. But if municipalities don't want to do anything, they want to close bottles. They want uh, SLPs to close bottles. They want to gravel, they want to, to create a gravel road. They want SLP to find graveling of a gravel road. You must know that you are far from it. So that is that is it. But we're working uh, with municipalities to appreciate these issues. We've persuaded companies to say, don't focus on small uh, projects. Pull your resource together, find impact projects in communities. And uh, that's why we're going to be ending over a clinic in Barberton, a clinic in Middleburg, and uh, continue because a, a clinic make an impact in that community. Uh, it is not given to an individual, it's given to a community, they get their service close to themselves. Thank you very much, Memtis, uh, uh, Thank you very much, Honorable Minister and your team. Uh, I'm not going to waste any time. I'll, I'll give you back to give us closing remarks. Uh, Honorable no. Minister. No, no. I, I can only uh, uh, assure you, Mr. Minister, that that department that we're in, we don't feel pain when we're called either to the National Assembly or the NCOP. We don't feel any pain. We think that it's a, it's a necessary irritation to be irritated by the, the select committee or, or the portfolio committee. And we find that we all come here, we come here in numbers. Um, you say, I don't have a deputy minister. Sometimes I don't pitch up, I do something else we weigh and agree that DG lead this team. It's not out of contempt, it's a question of pressures, but we want to account. We are committed to accounting. We are committed to being called in and be questioned on what we are doing, because we think that we are improving by the day. Mm -hmm. We want to be giving the best committee, the best service to the portfolio that we are responsible for. And the, the last thing is that uh, the difference between this department today and this department some years back is that it's a department that goes out in the field, interact with communities, talk to everybody. We have been to every mining area in the country. Want to continue doing that? It helps us, it educates us. Uh, it elevates our induction for those who are new uh, to onboarding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Honorable members, if you still have any question, you will put in writing and send to the department the answer because we don't have time. Uh, the Department of Agriculture is waiting for us. Honorable Minister and your team, we would like to thank you very much for presenting to your annual performance plan to us and answering all the questions. And what I can say, Honorable Minister, thank you very much for putting your tongues in, in practical to go down to the community to hear what the community are saying. This is a very important uh, for, 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 for our democracy so that people must know that we are not in the offices. We are all over the country. We don't see them only when we need them. 
we are always with them. Thank you very much for doing that and continue to improve your department. We have seen a lot of improvement in your department as the committee. Uh, even when you are not there, the DG, when he comes to us, he present and he answer. He give us uh, what we wanted from him. Thank you very much. Uh, this meeting is officially uh, closed. Thank you. Good night. Chair, we still got the Department of Agriculture. Thank you, Chair. Goodbye. No. Goodbye. Uh, I, I, the members, you must remain. I, we're not uh, Smith here. <laughs> hey, Smith, where are you going? I'm just you checking if go the chairperson is still awake. <laughs> you are not you going, going to go to Makalakwe. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aska, where are the department are they in? Sorry for yes, that. Chair. Yes, chairperson, they on the platform. Okay, allow them to come in. Why here, Memo Dyson? Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, and we apologize for that. You know, uh, today... <laughs> always to the point, talks us, always. <laughs> a lot of point. <laughs> we arrange a meeting such as uh, one hour, 30 minutes, uh, one hour, 30 minutes, but uh, we, can, we couldn't uh, cut Honorable Minister and his team. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Minister, are your team uh, or DGs, are your team, uh, all of them are in the meeting so that we can start? They should be in the meeting, uh, Memo Disa, because we logged in before 7.30, which was our time. Oh, thank you very much. And we will, uh, let me start by welcoming you, Honorable Minister, and your team for our meeting. And we apologize for two uh, issues. Uh, in the morning, we were supposed to have our meeting at uh, six o'clock, but unfortunately, because of the program of the NCOP, uh, that's why we have our meeting so late. We were supposed to have our meeting on Tuesday, but unfortunately, uh, NCOP had uh, two days workshop on budget, and it was very important. Then we shifted our meeting today. We could not uh, change our meeting to another day, as our program is very, very in, uh, packed. We don't have any space. We are working even in the evening, even on the holidays, we are working in these committees. We are dealing with three departments in this committee. So we are apologizing for that. And then secondly, we are apologizing for putting you waiting while we are still with the other department. Hope our, our apologies will be accepted, Honorable Minister. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Bus, can you give us the Kuobas, Can you give the uh, us the, the agenda for today? Yeah, I think Kuobas lost his connection. I will fall in. <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, briefing by the Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, and Reform on the APP and budget chairperson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, from your side, uh, Aska, do you have any apologies? Chairperson, it was only the two apologies from this morning, uh, Mr. Nana and Mr. Arnold, so far, nobody else here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Honorable Minister, from your side, do you have any apology? Not that I know of. The people are supposed to be here at all year, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, I am not going to waste any time because already we have wasted time. I'll give to you, Honorable Minister, if you can, but this is the department that uh, really is the, you know, 
is dealing with the food security, yeah, it's uh, uh, the where the uh, economy, it's, uh, the the bone of the economy. Uh, so we cannot say quick, 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 and rush, rush. But uh, if you can give us the important issue, key highlight uh, issues, Honorable Minister. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the Select Committee on Land Reform, Environment and Mineral Energy, uh, Honorable Debo Humodise, the members of the Portfolio Committee present, Deputy Ministers, Board members of our state-owned entities, senior management of our department and state-owned entities, parliamentary staff, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Chairperson, we meet at an exciting time when agriculture, land reform, and rural development are topical discussion in our discourse as a country. His Excellency President Ramaphosa dedicated significant time on his State of the Nation address on the 11th of February to agriculture, land reform, and rural development. He highlighted that agriculture will be part of the economic reconstruction and recovery program. So one of the things that we're doing, Chairperson, is to make sure that the role that agriculture and land plays will actually intervene in the four areas as mentioned by the president. Our economic reconstruction and recovery program seeks to ensure that we have a massive rollout of infrastructure throughout the country and from an agricultural point of view, our interest is to look at how we actually increase and improve infrastructure that is required for agricultural productivity. It's also about massive increase in local production and employment similar to job creation and support livelihoods, as well as the rapid expansion of our energy generation capacity. The Minister of Finance in his budget speech was also emphatic on the importance of the agricultural sector. In his outline on the budget, he highlighted our commitment towards employing about 10,000 extension officers over the next three years in South Africa. It was also encouraging that reading through all nine of the 2021 State of the Province addresses, all premiers without fail have also amplified the importance of the sector to our economy. Agriculture in the midst of COVID-19 and the economic challenges experienced in 2020 grew by 13.1% in 2020 year on year as compared to 2019. Agricultural economies expect this positive growth to grow in 2021 and were buoyed by the positive outlook that will grow investor confidence in our sector. However, in recognizing this positive outlook, we also equally recognize the challenges experienced as we advance towards inclusive growth and investment in the agriculture and agro-processing value chain. Some of the challenges that I want to highlight, Chairperson, include the following. The skewed pattern of land ownership, which continues to exist, and the failure of access to productive land by a majority of those who are historically disadvantaged. The high demand for water rights, which impact both commercial and smallholder farmers, but those who are largely impacted upon our smallholder farmers who may even be hindered in increasing their productive capacity. The diminishing and unreliable infrastructure capacity, such as our irrigation scheme, our fresh produce markets, and rural roads, which by themselves are also a stumbling block for agricultural development. Safety concerns for farmers and farm workers and a sharp increase in theft of stock and farming equipment is another area of our concern, which is why in the interministerial committee led by Deputy President Mabuza, we've actually developed a safety and security response strategy together with the Department of Safety and Security. Global challenges slowing the opening of new export markets and the inability to comply with stringent market access protocols is another challenge. Rising concentration and market power at food production processing and distribution level are another area of our challenges. But we do have the solution on how we can address some of these issues. It is for this reason that as a sector, which is government, including the provincial departments of agriculture, 
working with business, labor, and communities are working on the agriculture and agro processing master plan. A plan which seeks to resolve policy ambiguities and creating investment friendly climate, creating and enabling infrastructure, providing comprehensive farmer support, development finance, research and development and extension and advisory services, ensure food security and expand production and employment creation, enabling market expansion, improving market access and trade facilitation. The conclusion of the master plan, Madam Chair, will also advance South Africa's aspiration to achieve the objectives of the comprehensive African Agriculture Development Program on agricultural transformation, wealth creation, food security, and nutrition. The department was also part of the multi-stakeholder conclusion of the poultry and sugar master plan which were focusing on growing and sustaining these value chains. The output of this master plan will be factored into the targets within which our provinces will be working with us to support this industry. For poultry, the allocations to the provinces will include allocations to address production, meaning increasing more people who will enter the poultry sector, avian health and infrastructure requirements for the value chain. Regarding the sugar master plan, we've appreciated the challenges of the Eastern Belt sugar growing regions and the sugar value chain. The master plan advocates for diversification within the sugar industry, which would include energy generation, biofuels, and planting of alternative crops. I must say, Chairperson, that the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources is working with us and his team to find a way in which indeed we can make a plan for assisting the sugar industry to diversify into energy generation. The department is also part of an intergovernmental mechanism that is working towards concluding the cannabis master plan. Currently there are broad consultations taking place with various stakeholders in this cannabis master plan. Rightly and unapologetically so, Chairperson, we will guard against any attempt to marginalize those farmers and communities that have been in the forefront of growing of cannabis pre the commercialization era. Chairperson, it would be remiss of me not to address you without reflecting on the impact of COVID-19 on food, nutrition, and security at household level. In a study jointly conducted by the department and food and agriculture organization as part of our impact assessment of COVID-19 on food system. It is evident that smallholder farmers struggled to access their fields during the initial lockdown period and suffered post harvest losses. This impact on their income and also on their ability to resume with their operations in the new planting season must be addressed. There were also disruptions in terms of informal traders which then expose communities to vulnerabilities of food insecurities. The provinces that were hardest hit, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, and Western Cape, mainly due to the rural urban migration that had been experienced in the metropolitan areas of these provinces. All provinces have given commitments towards acceleration of food nutrition and security pro programs to address food security. Chairperson, without going into the detail on my speech, I just want to indicate that as the department, we will be presenting to you on how in terms of this current uh, year, we are going to imp implement some of the interventions or other programs that will advance land reform as well as rural development and agricultural development. With the process of the allocation of 700,000 state land, 700,000 state land is progressing well in the seven identified provinces. This allocation is in line with the recently approved beneficiary selection criteria that prioritizes the vulnerable groups. Today, we've been able to allocate about 436,000 hectares with the following breakdown in hectares. In Eastern Cape, about 15,000 595, in Free State 3,906, 
Gauteng 929, and in KwaZulu Natal 6,880, in Limpopo 65,764, in Pumalanga 14,590, while in the Northwest 276, 241, in Northern Cape 52,748. It is important for me to indicate that some of this hectare actually has gone to the communities that had been using part of this state land without, in most of them, some authority. So these adjustments are actually indicating how we have been able to confer the security of Tanya to the many millions of our people who actually never had before. The department is also working with the Office of the Special Master on labor tenants to resolve the outstanding labor tenants claim. On the 17th of May, the Office of the Special Master of Labor Tenant will be working, having a workshop where they will be bringing in a majority of stakeholders in this uh, labor tenant space. Those are the farmers, the labor tenants themselves to find a way in which we can resolve some of those claims that the department are facing. Honorable Chairperson, one of the things that we have acknowledged that we need to deal with and address is the strengthening of our institutional mechanism. We will be filling all the posts that we have, having concluded the first phase of the NMOC process so that we can build a capacity that is able to deliver. In conclusion, in presenting the 2021-22 annual performance plan of the Department of Land and Land Reform and Rural Development to the Select Committee, we will introduce our harness programmatic plan to ensure that there is tangible, sustainable growth in our sector. Working with the provincial departments, recognizing the concurrence of certain functions within our sector, we will amongst a number of strategic interventions present what we will be doing on the agro-processing side, on financial support interventions, on food security, on market access and marketing, as well as rural social infrastructure and rural industrial development. I will now through you, Chairperson, hand over back to you so that our team can then present our APPs in detail. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Uh, I give back to you and your team until you finish and then you'll give back to me. Thank you very much, uh, Memo Diste. Acting DP. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, and uh, thanks uh, for the introductions, um, Honorable Tebukho uh, Mudise, and to the Select Committee. Um, the department will today be presenting the APP. We have also provided the breakdown in terms of the allocations in terms of CASP and ILIMA. And for tonight, we will make the presentation on the APP. We will be taken through that uh, presentation by Me Mimi Muluzi, um, and she will hand over to the um, CFO to then give the breakdown in terms of the budget. I will now hand over to Me Muluzi to make the presentation with your permission, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Minister, uh, the Honorable Chairperson, DG, uh, members of the CDEC Committee and uh, the Dalat Management. Uh, I've got a presentation to make that is the annual performance plan which Secretariat would actually load now. Uh, it is the annual performance plan for the Department of Agriculture land reform and rural development. Uh, as chair has requested that uh, we should focus on the, you know, issues that are of importance. Uh, as you would see, chairperson and the minister, uh, the presentation has got, you know, uh, can we get to the next slide? 
the slide number two, the presentation has got uh, the outline, it has got acronyms and the background, which is slide number four and slide number five. Secretariat, can you move to slide number five? Yes, uh, on slide number five, where it shows us the constitutional mandate, and then coming to slide number six, which shows us the strategic focus, which comprises of our vision, the mission, and the values. And then slide number seven, that gives us the high, uh, high level measures, which we call strategic outcomes which then says the department is uh, working towards the achievement of these uh, seven outcomes uh, with its indicators that we're going to be uh, presenting to you. And slide number eight, it focuses on the contribution of our department based on the government uh, priorities and also the MTSF indicating which of the priorities in the MTSF are a core to us as a department and those where we are contributing and those that are an enabler. And then now coming to the next slide, slide number 10. This slides, uh, they're actually just showing uh, the chairperson to say that before we begin with, we begin with our APPs, we actually considered the SONA as it was pronounced by the uh, president to say, we've got uh, you know, indicators in our APP to ensure that we respond to the SONA commitments as pronounced. Uh, can we get to slide number 11? Slide, slide number 11, 12, uh, and 13, they are also our commitments from the department in terms of us indicating to the select committee to say that we did take it to the president's uh, state of the nation address, and then we have responded, responded accordingly. And now the next slides are coming to the alignment of our APP to the MTSF. So we have also indicated the priorities and the outcomes as per the indicators. And we have uh, identified uh, the indicators from our APP, how we are uh, responding or aligning to the MTSF. So slide number 15, slide number 16, and slide number 17 is, is uh, indicating the alignment of our APP to the MTSF and the priorities of government. Now, coming, starting from slide number 20, uh, we are now uh, presenting to you the select committee, as well as the chairperson and the minister to say this is our target program one, uh, because it is uh, issues that are related with governance they are only uh, reflected at the level of the national department, whereby we're talking about ensuring that we have an, audit, an unqualified audit opinion. And the second one, which is to ensure that we, uh, you know, we, we respond uh, by making sure that we pay all the valid invoices that are presented to us within 30 days. So that will be measured on a quarterly basis to say all the invoices that we receive, as long as they are valid, on a quarterly basis, we'll make sure that we, uh, we, 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 we uh, you know, address them, all of them at 100%. Now, the next slide, which is now coming to program two, Program two as well, this is a program that deals with the regulatory, uh, you know, frameworks on agriculture, on agriculture or agricultural production. So most of these targets, they are actually happening across all the, uh, the country in all the nine provinces. 
The first indicator that we have here is registration of new plant varieties. So we cannot uh, necessarily disaggregate it into um, all the nine provinces. This is when the farmers uh, need to register their plant varieties. They would actually come to the department to register. So our target here is about 150 uh, new plant varieties that we uh, are targeting to register. The next indicator is the number of animal improvement schemes for prioritized value chain commodities. We have targeted two improvement schemes. Uh, the first one is the KYD, and the second one is on the poultry. So this will also be done across all uh, provinces where the, uh, you know, the farmers are actually needing this service. The next um, indicator is the cannabis master plan implemented. So we have targeted that uh, uh, at the end of the year, we'll be able to produce the annual report on the implementation of the cannabis master plan. Uh, as the minister has alluded to the fact that this master plan will be implemented by uh, all, by us and other departments, we are going to be uh, leading the process. So now uh, on a quarterly basis, we'll produce a quarterly progress report uh, to show how the implementation is taking place. The next slide, please. The next uh, indicator is the number of provinces with delineated protected agricultural areas. So in this case, uh, we are going to be focusing only on three provinces. Uh, the three pro provinces that we are targeting is Limpopo, Northwest, and KZN. Uh, the next indicator is the number of plant pest resurveillances conducted. So these surveillances, obviously they would be taking place across the entire country. So we are targeting three plant pest uh, rig surveillances that would be done, which is uh, the exotic fruit fly, the citrus greening survey, and the banana bunch, bunch top virus. So in each and every quarter, these three surveillances will be conducted. And the next indicator is the number of animal disease risk surveillances conducted. This is going to be, uh, you know, implemented in the same way, same way as the one on top on the plant pest risk surveillances. Uh, the department has targeted three uh, animal disease risk surveillances, which is the CBPR, PPR, and the FMD. The next uh, slide, please. Uh, this one, it's, uh, we are actually targeting to employ uh, the veterinarians who are completing at universities, uh, you know, in the previous year. On a yearly basis, we place those, all of them who are eligible, we actually place them across all the nine provinces. Um, the next indicator is the number of agricultural input products evaluated. Uh, we have targeted uh, 4,500 of those. And on a quarterly basis, we have the disaggregation as indicated in the plan. And uh, the next indicator is the number of agricultural provincial biosecurity coordinating structure established. So we are targeting four provinces, which is Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Western Cape, and the Northern Cape. Uh, Chairperson, this is the first time that we will be um, uh, establishing this uh, structure. So structures. So we have uh, targeted only four provinces with the hope that uh, uh, as and when they go well, the next financial year, we are going to replicate to the remaining provinces. Uh, the next indicator is the number of laboratories accredited. Only one laboratory that has been identified in Pretoria will be accredited in this uh, financial year. Next slide, please. 
Uh, the next indicator is the percentage of export protocols for phytosanitary requirements implemented. So we are targeting 100% of those, uh, you know, export protocols for phytosanitary uh, requirements implemented. So that will be measured on a quarterly basis, all those that come for, um, you know, exports. Uh, uh, the, the target is 100% on a quarterly basis. And the next indi indicator is climate change adaptation and mitigation plan. Uh, in this case, we are also, um, you know, targeting uh, uh, four province, three provinces actually, which is KZN, Free State and Limpopo. Um, the next indicator as well, uh, here we are going to capacitate the small holders, you know, on crop suitability to climate change program. So the very same, uh, you know, capacity building uh, to these farmers will uh, take place in the targeted provinces of KZN, Free State and Limpopo. Can we get to the next uh, slide? Uh, finally, the indicator in this program, which is the number of GMO events approved. Uh, we are targeting 10 of new GMOs uh, that will be reported on the um, fourth quarter. And then which brings us to the next uh, program, which is program three on food security, land reform and restitution. The first indicator here is the number of communal property associations supported uh, uh, so that they are compliant with legislation. We have targeted at the level of the national department uh, 577. Uh, the provincial breakdown uh, is for Eastern Cape uh, 80, Free State 32, GP 15, uh, KZN 92, Limpopo 90, Mpumalanga 93, Northwest 84, Northern Cape 60, and finally Western Cape 31, which adds up to 577. The next slide. Uh, in this uh, indicator on the employment of extension practitioners in, in the sector will be coordinated the minister has indicated uh, in her you know, speech when she started that uh, the department uh, is planning to uh, you know, employ about 10,000 extension officers over the medium term. So uh, for the first year, we are targeting an annual report on the employment of extension uh, practitioners in all the nine uh, provincial departments. And the next indicator is the number of new students enrolled at the Agricultural Training Institute. Uh, we have targeted 800 and the capacity of our college can only accommodate 800. And the colleges that we have are 11 in the country. However, this 800 will be, uh, you know, on seven, provinces with the exclusion of Mpumalanga, Northern Cape and GP, because they do not have uh, colleges of agriculture. The next slide, please. The number of hectares of strategically located land acquired, uh, we have targeted 33,720. The breakdown, as you see it, a uh, chairperson and the minister uh, according to the provinces, Eastern Cape is 3,620, Free State 1,704, GP 640, KZN 3,517, Limpopo 2,813, Mpumalanga 2,640, Northwest 2,033, Northern Cape 12,997, uh, finally, Western Cape with 3,756. Uh, the total adds up to the national target of 33,720, which then takes us to the next slide. 
on the number of hectares acquired for dwellers and uh, labor tenants. So we've targeted uh, about 6,150 uh, of those hectares. Uh, the provincial breakdowns uh, as per, uh, you know, uh, provinces have been indicated there and they add up to the 6,150. Can we please get to the next slide? Uh, still on food security, the next indicator is the percentage of hectares allocated to women and allocated to youth and allocated to people with a disability. The department has targeted 1,000 of them and uh, we've got provincial breakdown uh, with the exception of Northern Cape as well as the Western Cape which brings us uh, to uh, 1,000 at the national level. Next slide, please. Number of land claims settled, 240 is the target at the national office. And we have the provincial breakdown uh, with the exception of free state uh, the provincial breakdowns add up to the national target of 240. Can we get to the next slide? Uh, number of land claims finalized. Uh, 316 has been targeted at the national level. Uh, we've got the disaggregation uh, in all the nine provinces, which adds up to 316 of the national target. Uh, can we get to the next program? No? Okay. Uh, we're still on food security. Number of farms supported through the land development support, pro, uh, support program. Uh, the farms targeted are 146 at the national level. And uh, we've got the provincial breakdown, uh, which adds up to 146 uh, as per the national target. Uh, which brings us to the end of program three. Now we're coming to program four, which is rural development. Uh, the first indicator there is the number of NARISEC uh, youth trained. Uh, nationally, we have targeted 1,409. The provincial breakdown uh, adds up to 1,409 as per the national target. And can we get to the next slide, please? Uh, number of jobs created in rural development initiatives. We have targeted 450 as a national target. And we've got the disaggregation for provincial breakdowns, which adds up to 450 as per the national target. Next slide, please. Uh, still on rural development, uh, we've got an indicator on the number of infrastructure projects uh, completed to support the farmer production support unit. Uh, we have targeted uh, 25 at the national level and the provincial breakdown adds up to 25 as per the national target. And uh, the last indicator on uh, program four, which is the number of infrastructure projects completed to support production. Uh, we have targeted 50 at the national level and uh, we've got the provincial breakdown, which adds up to 50 as per the national target. Uh, that brings us to the end of program four. Then we, are getting to program. No, no, there is the last one here on program four, which is number of technology research projects completed. Uh, there are five of, um, you know, uh, uh, technology research projects that we are targeting to complete in this financial year. So in the third quarter, we'll deliver two, and then on the fourth quarter, we'll deliver three so that we have a uh, in total five research projects. Uh, program five, which is uh, 
trade and marketing. Uh, the first indicator here is number of agricultural cooperatives trained. Uh, we are targeting 90. And on a quarterly basis, uh, we have the targets uh, 20, 24, 24 in the third quarter, and 22 in the fourth quarter. And the next indicator is percentage of AgriBEE fund application fi finalized. And we are targeting 100% of AgriBEE fund applications uh, to be finalized, which will be reported on the fourth quarter. It is an annual target. Uh, but on a quarterly basis, we'll be providing the, um, you know, the progress. Uh, the next indicator is the number of smallholder producers accessing my visa loan. Uh, we have targeted uh, 150 of them, and uh, there is quarterly targets there, uh, which adds up to 150 annually. And can we get to the next slide, please? Uh, the next indicator is the number of FSPU supported towards functionality. Uh, Chairperson should remember that in uh, the previous program, in program uh, four on rural development, the farmer production support unit was a uh, support uh, with regard to the infrastructure. But now in this program, the support is provided towards uh, them being functional. So now in total, the department has targeted uh, 35 of those FSPUs. Uh, the provincial breakdown uh, uh, with the exception of Limpopo and Northwest, uh, they aggregate to um, you know, 35 in total as per the uh, national target. Can you get to the next slide, please? A uh, number of new agricultural enterprises supported. Uh, the department has targeted uh, 71 at the national level and the provincial breakdown, uh, they add up to 71. Uh, with the exception of Mpumalanga, we do not have uh, you know, agricultural enterprises that would be uh, supported, uh, but it does happen in all other eight provinces. The next slide. Uh, still on a uh, program five, number of new non-agricultural enterprises supported. Uh, we have targeted 15, and then we've got uh, the provincial breakdown, Free State, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northwest, and Northern Cape are not going to be implementing a, a new non-agricultural uh, uh, enterprises. The target there is 15 uh, as per the national target. Uh, it aligns. Uh, the next slide is marketing of agricultural product act. Uh, this is a policy here that is going to be revised. Uh, we are targeting that uh, by the end of the year, there should have been a public consultation of the, you know, amendment of the marketing of agricultural product uh, bill, amendment bill. So uh, it is still a work in progress, and it is uh, the, you know, the bill that is actually done at the level of a national department. And the next indicator is the number of trade agreements implemented. Uh, the department has targeted six uh, uh, trade agreements to be implemented. The next slide, please. The next indicator is the number of trade agreements negotiated. Uh, the department has targeted five uh, trade ag agreements to be negotiated. And uh, the next indicator is the number of multilateral commitments implemented. Uh, six of them have been targeted at the level of the national office. And um, the next indicator is the bilateral agreements implemented. With this indicator, we've got two targets. Uh, the first one is the status report on the bilateral engagement on the South-South. 
and North-South. The second uh, is the status report on the bilateral engagement on Africa continent. The next slide, please. We are on program six, that is the last program, land administration. Uh, the indicator is the EDRS phase completed. Uh, so the annual target is to achieve at least phase one of it at the level of 75% to be completed. So over the quarters, uh, we are indicating that uh, the first quarter will be at least at 5%, second quarter at 20%, third quarter at 45%, and at, at the, on the fourth quarter, we shall have reached 75% target. The next indicator is DITS, Registries Amendment Bill, uh, and Cabinet Memorandum submitted to the Minister for submission to Cabinet and uh, for pro promulgation purposes. So uh, for for an annual target, uh, it's to submit the bill uh, and the cabinet memo to minister to submit to cabinet for promulgation purposes. The next slide, please. Uh, the next indicator in this program is monitoring framework for NSDF special action areas implemented. Uh, and a plan developed. So uh, we are targeting that uh, the monitoring framework should actually be uh, developed at the end of the financial year. That will be finalized at the end of the fourth quarter. And the next indicator is the average number of work day, waiting days taken to process cadastral documents from trade uh, of from the date of lodgement to the date of dispatch. So we are targeting 15 days at least for this financial year. Uh, the next slide that comes is uh, the high level uh, budget as per the ENE. Uh, the CFO will actually give a more detailed uh, presentation with regard to the budget uh, that has been allocated per specific branch. Uh, I thank you, uh, Chairperson, as well as Honorable Minister, uh, the DG, and uh, members of the Select Committee. Thank you. Honorable Chair, we will then hand over to um, the CFO, Miranda Nisadiki, just to run through the budget. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, DG, and uh, good evening to the chairperson and members of the committee. And uh, um, uh, my apology. Um, good evening to the minister and uh, the DG and colleagues. Um, can I just uh, ask uh, Mimi to remove the presentation so I can fly to the budget uh, presentation? Thank you. Um, Mm. Is it now visible? Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you. I will just run quickly um, through the budget and concentrate the, on the share of the provinces being the share of the uh, budget that we allocate to the former PSSC offices that runs with the land reform 
and the grant allocation for the Illimaliti Cusp and Land Care. Um, it, um, at uh, the departmental level, our budget is 16.9 billion and it's allocated amongst the different uh, branches starting with uh, administration that got 2.7 billion and it's mostly just uh, uh, the biggest allocation there goes to your corporate support services more especially on the IT support and the office accommodation uh, we, which we are building the um, national headquarters of the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. And on program two, uh, on agriculture program, uh, productions, biosecurity and natural resources, we have uh, allocated 2.6 billion, which is 15.4% of the 16.9 billion budget that we have. Um, on program three, which is food security land reform and restitution, we have 8.8 .8 billion. And this is where most of the uh, uh, allocations that goes to the uh, province, uh, both at the provincial department of agriculture is grant allocation and the PSSC, or provincial shared services um, centers. Um, this is where most of the allocation come from. We've got food security at 2 billion, uh, which is mostly your know, Ilima Litsima and uh, CASP allocation, land redistribution and tenure at 965 million, uh, national extension services and sector capacity development at 569 million. We've got farmer development support at 612 million, uh, restitution at 3.5 billion, and uh, our entity, ALA that takes care of our state land um, at 937 million. This is both for land acquisition at provinces and also for support of those farms. We've got the Ingonyama Trust uh, Board at 23 million and Office of the Valua General at 131 million. Program four, which is rural development is 1 billion and uh, economic development and trade and marketing at 886 million, 5.2% of the total budget and led ad administration is 758 million. And that is how the 16.9 billion is made up. Now, this is just the slicing. So you can see how every program is catered for. And you can see that the biggest a portion of the budget being 52.2% is sitting with program three. And that is where most of the uh, allocations for the grants are sitting. This is just an economic classification with our salaries or COE taking 23.7% of the budget. We've got goods and services. And here most of the service uh, delivery of what we do in infrastructure and in support for both agriculture and non-agriculture enterprises is sitting at 3.7 billion and uh, the, differ, the, the remainder being just the heads, overheads of the department. Um, on the departmental agencies, that is all the agencies that we have, including ARC, we've got 2.4 billion grant funding. And on households, this is where mostly the restitution and uh, land reform uh, is allocated being 3.5 billion. And on provincial and local governments at 2.3 billion, being your grants that we send to the PDAs, including the rates uh, and taxes on the properties that we have. And the last one being building and other infrastructure, it's a bit higher because we are going to be uh, building the head office and that is the slicing. Now, in terms of the provincial allocation, this is the provincial allocation of the PSC, the provincial set services that we have across the country, and not the provincial departments of agriculture. We're still going to come to that one. At administration, we've got 487 million. Food security, land, re and land reform and restitution, the bigger 
portion of that it goes to land being being 3 billion. And you can see of the total 6.7 billion, uh, again, the 65% is allocated food security, land reform, and restitution. Rural development gets an allocation of 991 million or 14.8%. And most of, um, of it goes into infrastructure with a small portion going into our NARISEC program, which has been scaled down more so because of the impact of COVID-19 that we are not able to gather masses because we all know that we train these kids at our college. So we had to scale down and the budget is limited. But we have allocated them on goods and services where we continue to hire them for other program like our PACI where we have 1,400 of them that are currently saving the department in terms of a verification of our applicants. In program five, we've got 498 million or 7.4% and land administration being the National Geomatic Management Services and Special Planning and Land Use at, at a 5.4% of budget of 363 million. And that's what made up the 6.7 billion, which is for the PSSC. At economic classification, you can see again, 22% of the 6.7 billion goes to salaries, goods and services at 1.6 billion. And I think here it's not just overheads because of the change in the score uh, classifications, even some of the money that is sitting here is allocated for service delivery. For as long as we do not do the service delivery through grants, SCOWA requires that we should allocate it under goods and services. And household, which is purely a, a restitution, land reform, and rural development at 51.9%, and rates and taxes sitting at 84 million, machinery and equipment at 13.5 million. Now per province, um, the 6.7 billion, this is how it's sliced, sliced amongst the provinces with KZN getting a bigger portion at 1.3 billion, followed by Mpumalanga at 1 billion, and the rest is shared amongst. Uh, I must just indicate this is allocated based on the APP that we have seen that we fund through the provinces and a whole lot of other uh, issues that we consider, like the commitments that are made through the MTSF, uh, through the uh, strategic plan of the department and all the commitments like your SONA. So this is how we then slice and also the poverty concentration and the the size of the provinces does have an impact on how we allocate the funds. And this is just how we sliced it. You can see again KZN coming as the highest in terms of allocation of budget. Um, on the now, this one is for the PDAs, the provincial departments of agriculture on land care. This is how it's going to be. We've got 83 million budget. Um, and this is how it's allocated to the different provinces. On Ilima Litsima, we have 597 million. And this is how it's allocated amongst the different uh, provinces. Uh, and CASP uh, infrastructure, we've got 1.1 billion. And this is how it's allocated amongst the different provinces. You would have seen when Memulos was doing the presentation, you will all know what is going to happen at every provinces. And this is how we allocated the funding. And on extension services, we have 310 million. Um, and the last one is CASP upgrade uh, for agriculture colleges. It's 90 million. Um, this is just the entities of the department and you can see ARC get the bigger allocation of 1.2 billion 
followed by the agricultural land holding at 937 million. Now, I did not do a summary. In summary, we've got over 8.7 billion that has been allocated to the provincial Department of Agriculture and the PSAC taking over 50% of the budget of the department uh, directly to service delivery at the provincial level. Even the one that remains in the department at national level because of the mandate that is a non-concurrent of the land, there's still a bigger portion of our, of our budget that still go to service delivery. Uh, thank you. Are you done, uh, Department? We submit, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, members, but me, Minister, do you want to add again? Or before I give to back to the Honorable Members to ask questions? No, Chaperson, I think we can go ahead with the questions. Okay. Honorable members, uh, here, the, here are the presentation from the department. Uh, questions? Smith. Uh, Honorable Smith, Honorable uh, Winningwenya, Honorable Lindy Webby, Honorable Nyambi is in the meeting, but it's quiet. Uh, Honorable uh, Matibe. Yes, start Honorable Smith. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, were you saying Honorable Nyambi is quiet? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, yeah he's yeah. part of the furniture already in the NCOP. So. <laughs> 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 Honorable, <laughs> um, Honorable Minister, um, I've got quite a few questions. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, in the previous term, um, uh, we heard a lot about the agri parks and the agri hubs. So I, I just want to get an update in terms of the status of. Okay, we know that agri parks is not really existing. Uh, it's a, it's a dream for for the future. Although agri hubs should be functioning already. So I want to know in terms of that, what's the status of, of our agri hubs as is? And um, uh, yeah, um, in terms of the funding, obviously, because we are under financial constraint as a country and the budgets are cut as we also heard now again, um, you know, how are we gonna sustain this this program that is set out and, and what's the what's the future of it? Uh, the second question is, I, I want to know in terms of, the, of cooperatives, um, you know, the funding of cooperatives, um, because we hear a lot of, um, you know, feedback from cooperatives where there's issues, there's conflicts and all of that, and that causes uh, failure at the end. So I would like to know in terms of these cooperatives that we are funding uh, from the department, what percentage are actually successful, and if we don't know, you know, can we can we ensure that we 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 get a you know an audit on that so that we know where our money goes actually, um, you know, from the department that is it's actually effective and and is contributing positively uh, towards the economy of the country as well and 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 the future. Um, the third question is um, I. I want to have, um, I, I've asked a lot of questions in the previous term around the Makhova tier states. So I just want to get a update in terms of what is the status now of Makhova tier states in uh, uh, um, uh, area of Zanin or, uh, uh, yeah. Um, um, and then um, this, uh, in terms of the safety of farmers and, and, and the borders, uh, especially around the free state, you know, and, and those areas uh, where there's a lot of stock theft. Um, it, how is the department contributing or, uh, you know, developing, maybe developing a, a strategy and, and a plan and maybe, you know, help to fund some of these uh, uh, 
uh, um, systems to help to sort out this problem because it's obviously it's having a very very bad negative effect on on agriculture and and as a result you know it it escalates down at the end of the day to, uh, you know to to job creation as well uh or cascade down rather not escalate um and then in terms of um uh, uh, okay, there's a question that I've submitted to you, uh, Minister, uh, for which I got the response. Now, thank you very much for that. In terms of uh, individual ownership uh, in tribal and communal areas. So I, I saw in the answer, you know, it was differentiated uh, between the two. So in terms of communal CPAs, it said that there can be a... Um, uh, uh, somebody can apply for that. So, in terms of that system and process, how are uh, you know how's the department setting out to be able to do that? If there is now an inflow of people who actually say, "Listen, we want individual ownership, and uh, we want to be able to to utilize that that system." And then on the other side, in terms of the tribal area, uh, sorry, just hold on for me one second. Thank you. Sorry, my apology. Um, in terms of, of tribal areas, uh, as it is, there's no legislation in place. I assume it's going to come with the with the legislation in terms of uh, security of tenure, which I will come later. So if we can just combine that with that question. Uh, the standard, uh, standardization of uh, determining the definition or identifying the difference between small scale commercial and sub, uh, substantive farmers. Um, what, what criteria is being used and, and is it standardized throughout different provinces? Because I got the idea before that there's no standardization of that. So it, that makes it difficult, you know, if we spent on, let's say, uh, 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 um, small scale farmers, what are we actually talking about? And then in terms of the different sectors within agriculture, how do we differentiate and apply that methodology, uh, you know, in terms of identifying what is the differences? Um, then I want to know the progress, that's it, the progress in terms of the security of tenure uh, bill. Uh, and then I also want to know, is there any other legislation that's in the pipeline and how far is that? Um, then on the question of the status of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the on success of land reform programs that was funded by the department or capitalized, uh, the audit, how far is that, was the progress in terms of that audit? Um, okay, then in terms of rural development, and this is something, uh, Minister, that I've, that I've tried to to get under the attention of various departments, because unfortunately this is a matter that is cross-departmental and, and will need an interdepartmental, uh, 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 you know, cooperation to, to succeed, is the, you know, the transportation system. Um, because there's the saying to say that all, all roads leads to Rome, you know, uh, that comes from the, the time of the Romans. Now, I, I, I've got the same thinking in terms of all roads lead to the cities um, because the the biggest economic um, activities are within the cities and for rural development to truly succeed um, and and to get and stimulate economies there you need to link it with the sources of economy which is the the cities through proper rail and road networks um, so you know is the department, you know, planning in that direction and trying to, to coordinate such a thing that will help both rural development and what? I mean, it's a simple, and I, I would like one day if there's an opportunity, you know, to, to, uh, to have a discussion with you, Minister, on this idea that I think can help a lot in, in ensuring that we have uh, um, a, a boost in, in the rural economy. Um, then, um, okay, that's also, I also want to, you know, in terms of storage facilities, then um, fresh markets, uh, uh, fresh markets, I mean, it's, I remember, you know, as a young, young uh, boy, you know, coming from a farm myself, 
uh, how fresh markets play the big role, and it seems like it's it's falling out. So, is there any um, you know? And and I see now that some of the the fresh markets in the cities are not working. What is being done in terms of that to to make sure that that because it also helps to create a market for 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 the farmers and the small farmers to sell their products at. Um, in terms of exports, um, I, I had a discussion with somebody who, uh, uh, a while ago on uh, the citrus farmers that was exporting their, their products through Mozambique, um, you know, because it's the closest port in Limpopo. Um, but then uh, it came across that these farmers actually changed uh, from using uh, uh, Mozambique uh, because uh, they they were um, I don't know if it was deliberate or negligently or whatever that that the the ships were held back you know and and the whole process was delayed for weeks and then um, these farmers are are charged like ten thousand US dollars a day for for delay fees in terms of the containers and all of that. So they stop using that, and and now they they transporting it all the way to Durban or to Cape Town to be able to transfer. So, so I don't know if if uh, the minister can can you know play a role to try and fix that problem because I think you know it is it's a great opportunity. To, to maximize on that. Uh, it seems that there might be some um, uh, corruption on the other side in terms of, of that. Um, and then I want to know in terms of the spending, as we know, Minister, you know, a big, big portion of this department's funds go to provinces. And, and it's something that I'm really concerned about, you know, the effective use of the money, you know, at provincial level. So I want to know, does the department have a effective monitoring system um, to make sure that we get, you know, value for our buck that, go that goes to provinces and make sure, you know, that, that we can actually monitor and, make sh and determine where is it effectively used and where is it failed? And then if it is, uh, what is the status of the different provinces? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Smith. Honorable Luwini Nguenya. Ma'am Nguenya. Okay. I don't Honorable. think any of the other members have got questions on now that I'm finished. Chair. Aye, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Ma'am, Ma you are uh, out of order. Yes, Mama. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, honorable uh, Winningwenya. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chairperson. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Chair. Yes, Mama. And evening, good evening, uh, Minister. Uh, Chair, I wanted to acknowledge the agriculture in the schedule for functioning in terms of the constitution of the Republic as it has functional areas of current, concurrent function between national and provincial. This means that National Department of Agriculture has to work with their provisional counterpart to implement service delivery in provinces. Honorable Chairperson, I have seen in the APP that the department is planning to employ about 1,000 extension officers who will be deployed across the provinces to assist farmers. The question is, what will be the criteria to employ such officers and which de department will these officials be accountable to? Is it national or provisional? The second question, Chair. The second on... Patiso Omiango, Netimia Keyonke. Minister Sustogim Sevenze Bonagash. 
since nje watata over lo mnyango ya bonaga lo hamba makale eh, my question will be angome nje la hapo mnyango wako eh, okay my first question will be um, I've seen recent uh, press releases state uh, that the agri parks development across the country are falling into disrepair. Is this an accurate reflection on the current situation? If so, this is the loss of billions of rents of investment and significant deteriorating of farmer support capacity in the prioritized district. My second question will be the departmental presentation uh, on page 12 of 56 states, our work on climate change will be guided by the pres presidential coordinating commission on climate change. Is the department represented on this panel by its own experts? Will the department also be responsible for the details of the agriculture related response to climate change or rely on the work performed in the commission? On the same slide, the department states that its climate change response will revolve around capacitating farmers on crop suitability. What about livestock farmers facing the severe water sh shortage uh, or areas of dry land agriculture that will not receive sufficient rainfall for traditional production methods? What will be done to incorporate technological advances or alternative livelihood in the Department of Response? Chairperson and on biosecurity in agriculture, the foot and mouth disease is a serious challenge in provinces and is also national challenge despite the fact that the department has provincialized vegetarian uh, and veterinary services. And the last one, Chairperson, will be on the land. Uh, the land acquisition is to support the communal property associations um, and the labor tenants. Now, uh, and remain the areas of how high priority for the government. In to what extent will the budget of the department ensure that the success of these programs are achieved in the current financial year? And are uh, and are we receiving a value for money for all the funds spent in the land reform in view of the fact that land reform uh, is uh, one of the priority uh, of the government? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Mama. Uh, Honorable House Chairperson Nyambi, you have, you have been struggled with a network, I've seen you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Mama. I'm sorry, Baba. I'm happy to talk after you, Mama. Yeah, Let me join also and uh, welcome the presentation by the minister and the delegation. Uh, I've been covered by my colleagues, except uh, to raise maybe two critical issues. The first one is, uh, Minister, we are fully behind what we are doing, um, echoing what has been said by Mama, that uh, since you started in that department, we can see what you are doing. 
But I want to make a general comment that I think it can go a long way to assist us as the a country, uh, especially the role that is being played by the National Council of Provinces. If in future, when you come to us and doing the presentation, tweak it a bit and have a lot of uh, serious focus on what is happening in our respective provinces so that uh, we can be both critical, constructively so, and assist where there are some challenges because as a house that is representing the interest of provinces, sometimes we tend to do a little bit of a duplication of what we are doing in the other house, yet we can assist. Oh. Are you still there, Papa? Spoiling, spoiling here, man. I don't know what's happening. Can you hear Can me, Chair? Yes. You can continue, yeah. Comrade Honorable Nyambi. Okay. Yeah, I I was raising the issue of what they can assist us as an COP assisting by focusing on what is happening in our respective provinces and how to do when we are engaging the minister. Uh, as uh, the minister uh, uh, Mandashe said earlier on, Chair, that uh, it has been a very hectic, long day. So I wouldn't want to take much of your time except to say, uh, Minister, at an appropriate time, we will raise those questions that will focus on what is happening in our respective provinces to assist because uh, not much can be as, uh, achieved if uh, we're still lagging behind when it comes to the issues of land not being addressed properly, but we commend what we have done and the programs that is being presented to us. It's something that we'll be checking and we'll be asking questions, uh, sponsoring motions and being involved in debate. Uh, I am covered, Chair. I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you, Chair, before the network spoiled everything. Thank you very much, Papa. Thank you, Mama. Chairperson, I'm, I'm, I'm covered. I, I'll uh, wait for the responses from the department if there are any follow-ups, but all the areas that I wanted to touch, I think they're covered by colleagues. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, from my side, uh, Honorable Minister and, and your team, under your program two, can the department advise us on the state of the national generic uh, seed bank in South Africa, as it will ensure that the, the that we preserve the, our indigenous uh, crop material for a future generation. How much has the department allocated for seed generic bank? What uh, the department is doing uh, for the research to ensure that this uh, genetic material store in the genetic bank, Gini bank, is adapted to the change environmental condition. Second question is uh, the grant allocated under your program three. We welcome uh, the significance of the increase in allocation towards the infrastructure from the gaps, gap, uh, gap, gap grant infrastructure. Can the department provide the committee with the <laughs> assurance that all the provinces have their implementation plan for this allocation? And what are the control measures are in place to ensure that the right beneficiary benefits 
from this uh, 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 allocation. And we must uh, avoid the wasteful expenditure and uh, underspending. Well, I'm saying this, Honorable Minister, because if uh, the uh, provincial department, they don't have a plan, they will never implement it. And it will be a fruitless expenditure or unspent uh, uh, money. Question three, can the department state that, uh, or the department stated that in their plan to register 100 new plant uh, varieties, varieties in this uh, financial year. Can the department please provide us with the more information as it related to how will these new varieties support our farmers who face harsh climate change, uh, climate condition, and limited of water for irrigation? Uh, question number four, Honorable Nguenya, ask it, but I just want to put on this side. Uh, the department uh, are planning a poultry improvement scheme. It is welcome. As it, uh, most of our farmers are facing the challenges in terms of the market access. They don't have market. And they are competitive. Competi as required, as a, the competitiveness and uh, facing a incident of uh, diseases. How will this scheme address those uh, 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 challenges that are facing our local uh, poultry farming? And how many are existing and new farmers will benefit? on this uh, poultry plan, uh, Minister. Thank you very much uh, from my side. Can, can we get the answers, uh, Minister? So first thing, I'll ask the team to respond and I'll come at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair, um, Honourable Members of the Select Committee. Um, I will request that um, through your permission, Chair, we go through uh, the questions which I have stratified into five critical areas as they were asked by the Honourable Members and requested that issues relating to rural development, especially on the agri-parks, that we get a response from uh, Dr. Mayindi um, that will also include the issues around the uh, cooperatives. Uh, secondly, on the issues that have got to deal with the coordination of the conditional grants that we are giving as a department, uh, we request that Mem Chisa responds to those. Uh, thirdly, on the issues that um, we have uh, relating to land reform, um, we request Ndate uh, Terindove um, to respond to the issues that are there. And then uh, fifthly, we will also have to respond as uh, directed by the chair on the issues that have got to deal with biosecurity. Um, I will respond to that and I also respond to the issues that have got to deal with um, the um, issues relating to um, varieties and also the seed bank. If uh, the chair allows, I will then ask the colleagues, Dr. Mayindi, Mayor uh, Mchiza, Daten Dove to respond, and then I'll take the last uh, before handing over to the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. Dr. Mayindi. Good, good evening, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, the Honorable Chair and members of the Select Committee, uh, Acting DG and colleagues. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the questions. I think there is a question that came from Honorable Smith in terms of the status of the agri-hubs. 
Uh, I must say that uh, the, the, some of the sites that uh, we have provided infrastructure, uh, there were also issues that happened in terms of, a, a, for example, the storms a, that a happened a, in the past. And some of those uh, structures have been destroyed, but we have worked uh, in terms of uh, bringing them back to functionality. For example, uh, in terms of the Bekasdal uh, one in the Gauteng province. So, in terms of uh, so, what we have decided actually to do is that uh, we are working on a plan to revisit all the sites that uh, where they, there was investment, so that we can see which ones are still functional and the ones that are not really functional. So, but uh, if I can just talk about um, the last financial year where our strategy was also to support the, the pharma production support units, we have provided infrastructure to about 15 of them uh, just to contribute towards their functionality. And um, in, 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 in that 15 number, the provinces that were supported uh, were Eastern Cape, uh, the Free State, uh, KZN, and uh, Limpopo, uh, Pumalanga, Northwest, and Western Cape. So I'm not sure, uh, maybe I'll take time to just indicate the numbers, but for example, in the Eastern Cape, we have Zanyokwe. It is functional uh, as, a, as an FPSU, and that, there are farmers and cooperatives that are working on that. And uh, in the free state is Odendal, Stress, we have a Spring Fontaine, we have Kronstadt, uh, again, the, there's work that is happening. And then in KZN, it is uh, Pomoroy, uh, Malenge, Mkupula, Shufluwe, uh, those are the four in KZN. And then in Limpopo is a place, Boom and Masalal, Whereas in Pumalanga is Sebran, Skral, and Kutlu, and Kamiel Refir, and uh, one in the Northwest in Tau, and one in the Western Cape in Ebenezer. Uh, so I think uh, that is all I can say, Acting uh, 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 DG. In terms of the cooperatives, um, because that work is also not under. A program for a. I'm not sure if a, my colleagues will want to to cover that. But in some of the areas where I was talking, I can just talk openly in terms of a, the the co-ops that are in those a, a, a FPSUs. But I'll I'll rather maybe let a, my colleagues say that are dealing with cooperatives a, to respond on that one because we are more on the infrastructure side. Yeah. Thank you, TG. Um, um, uh, May Adam Chiza. It would seem like uh, Ma'am Chiza is having challenges in terms of unmuting. Um, may I request that we go to Ndatendove? Thank, thank, thanks, uh, Acting, Acting DG. Um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Minister, Deputy Ministers, Honorable Members. Um, there was a question from Honorable Smith, uh, regarding legislations uh, that are uh, to address issues of tenure. Um, there's currently a communal land tenure bill that is currently under consultation. Uh, it will go back to, um, to Parliament for finalization uh, after consultation. Um, the other one have just been finalized now, ULTRA, 
I, I, I hope members are very familiar with it because it has just been finalized some weeks ago. Uh, those are the two uh, pieces of legislation that uh, focuses um, uh, on issues of tenure. Uh, with regard to land, um, in terms of whether are we receiving any value for money um, on our land reform programs, the answer will be yes and no. There are areas where there are pockets of success, but we also have got challenges in some other areas. Uh, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, government has acquired a lot of land through various programs of land reform. However, uh, the ability to make those acquired land to be productive have proved to be a challenge. There are areas where there are successes, but we also experience some challenges. Um, from the department, we are working on coming up with a very clear program that is called post-settlement support that seek to ensure that land that has been acquired must, must not remain full. It must be turned into product, product, production or become productive so that we can be able to ensure food security, jobs, and also grow the economy. So there, there is a serious backlog in terms of uh, making that land productive. However, there are some areas where there are successes. Um, there was also a mention of the Communal Property uh, Association, CPAs. That is also one of the sore areas in the land reform. Um, these entities are used to hold land for communities that are given land. And in many cases, this land is also agricultural land or other, for other purposes of economic importance. However, conflict, um, poor governance are associated with the CPAs uh, throughout the country. And that in itself also affect the, the utilization of that land properly uh, in terms of its potential, whether it's agriculture or other purposes. However, department is working on trying to um, address this problem um, through, firstly, um, intervening where there are challenges. However, in the long term or medium to long term, is to look at the how we could um, make a very th thorough assessment of utilization of CPA as the holding entities for land for communities, whether there are no alternatives um, or better, um, you know, approach or strategies that we can use than CPAs. However, that is a process that is will unfold even from this year to try to take audit and stock of the current CPAs with the intention to engage um, both members of the CPA and other interested members in trying to find a better solution uh, for um, 
um, having a better way of managing uh, holding entities, whether in the form of CPA or any other form that will be best, whether it will to be reviewed the CPA or come up with another way of holding land on behalf of communities. I also would like to indicate that um, with regard to the backlog that we have in terms of, de of development of the land that has been acquired through various um, uh, instruments of land reform, including restitution, um, the redistribution and tenure. Um, we, we, we have to find a way where how we can balance what we acquire and how to develop it. I think that balance have to be, um, we'll have to find that balance because both of them are important. Um, we can't stop acquiring land, but at the same time, we cannot acquire land which we cannot be able to turn it into to be productive. So that is also a challenge that faces the department and it's something that we assist with and we hope we'll be able to find that correct balance to ensure that the two are able to move together. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dadin uh, Dove. Um, with your permission, Chair, can I call on Mayor Eldam Chiza on the coordination of the conditional grants? Thank you, Dr. Uh, Masodi. Good evening, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members of the Select Committee. With regard to the coordination of the conditional grants, and I think the question was more with regard to whether we are getting value for money, uh, which we get distributed to provinces. We have the, we actually guided by the Division of Revenue Act. Um, and with that, we are expected to hold quarterly review meetings. Um, also, we sign agreements with the provincial HODs to indicate the extent of capacity that they need to make available within provinces. We further had outlined the requirements for an oversight and monitoring at provincial level, where in every project that is approved for implementation has to be assigned an extension officer there must also be an engineering as well as the technical experts um, within the province who has to oversee the implementation of those projects. The specifications in terms of the infrastructure that needs to be established also needs to be signed off by the engineers. So to an extent where the quality and the standard of the projects that we had approved does not meet the requirements of the standard, we have gone to a level of holding accountable the official who had signed it off for payment. Um, coming to national, we have a panel of experts that gets appointed um, by the director general um, and those technical experts would include livestock, crop production, marketing, agro-processing, um, also business development, uh, because we do not just set up the infrastructure in the air, we set them up on farms also to assist those farmers to farm profitably. So we also need to look at the affordability um, of the infrastructure that we provide on farms and whether indeed after uh, uh, supplying it, the farmer is actually going to be able to produce correctly and earn the income that is required and create the jobs that is required. This team that gets appointed has a responsibility to oversee projects that are implemented in provinces and on a quarterly basis, those verification uh, visits do okay. We also have separate from the program now, the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation, who would also do 
random sampling of the projects um, that are implemented through the conditional grants. Um, lastly, the oversight of conditional grants happens at a MinTech level where the DG holds the HODs accountable on the work that gets implemented and any misalignment to the plans also gets corrected also um, at that level. And the final oversight is that where the minister meets with MECs and if there are challenges that are reported, they are also addressed at a political level. That is the extent of controls that we tried to put in place with regard to the funding that gets distributed to provincial departments of agriculture. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chair. Um, let me um, take the other areas um, that were asked um, starting with uh, Honorable Smith um, on the issues relating to firstly the safety of the farmers and um, especially around the borders um, indicated that Minister in her introductory speech um, she indicated the work that is being done at the interministerial committee uh, headed by the Deputy President um, looking at the implementation of the rural safety strategy that is uh, mainly based on uh, four pillars of enhancing service delivery at those points, um, integrating the approach that we have as different departments and uh, social partners, uh, community safety awareness and um, rural development. And this work um, is currently uh, taking place. Um, there was a workshop that was also held by the responsible departments together with the farmers and we are advancing the strategies that were um, conceived during that uh, particular engagement. On the issues around um, communal land tenure, um, the very same IMC um, that I've indicated headed by the Deputy President is also looking at the uh, communal uh, land tenure system. There is currently an outline in terms of the consultation process, um, which takes a critical path of how do we um, then consult with the different parties um, that would culminate in a land summit that would be held to ensure that we can then usher into the space a new um, uh, uh, bill that would deal with communal land tenure. There was also a question from Honorable Smith on the standardization of the small scale um, and subsistence uh, farmers in terms of terminology. And to this effect, noting the uh, differences that we have from different um, stakeholders, there is a national policy on comprehensive producer development uh, support that the department is coming up with that clearly delineates um, the different levels at subsistence, at smallholder, and at commercial. Because even within those uh, different levels, you would have substructure that would deal with this. And that would be applicable to even different industries and also uh, agro industries that are within uh, our line. Um, we haven't gone to a level where we are saying that there would be legislation, but the policy is there. On the fresh produce markets, um, I agree with you that there's a huge role uh, for dealing with fresh produce market, but we also need to realize that um, with the advent of a quicker way of uh, procurement, there are other areas of procurement uh, on how to get into the value chain. But in terms of the fresh produce markets, the department together with the responsible uh, or even the relevant municipalities, um, we are running a, a fresh produce re renewal program that is meant to ensure that we can bring back um, a fruit and veggies into the fresh produce area and the people can enjoy um, that from there because some of the uh, fresh produce markets that we are having are dilapidated. So there's a concerted effort to just deal with the regional problem of this um, area. On the exports of, um, of citrus uh, through Mozambique, it's something that I would think that Minister would, would address. But my understanding in terms of the previous uh, engagements uh, within the citrus industry is that once the issues around the geopolitics have been taken uh, care of, 
the, the, the nearer, if you go through Maputo, um, you would maximize in terms of uh, costs uh, other than going through Deben. But I should also hasten to say that the way that um, exports are happening now is that we have we we, we mainly deal with containerized um, uh, exports, and it's quite um, easier than to also do regulatory frameworks uh, within the farming uh, areas. We will then move to the questions that were asked by Honorable Nguenya. Yes, um, the issues around concurrence are very important, and we recognize that um, as a department and in her response, Mayor Mchiza was uh, outlining the coordination mechanisms that we have in place to ensure that um, nothing falls between the cracks when we implement this um, uh, uh, important uh, aspect of our constitution that recognizes concurrence of agriculture um, and rural development to a larger extent. Um, on the poultry master plan, um, yes, the, the master plan was concluded. And uh, in terms of the work that we are doing as the department, I can uh, indicate that we deal with it at two levels, the national level and the uh, provincial level. At provincial level, there are expectations in terms of ramping up production, ensuring that uh, we have got farmers who can be contract growers and ensuring that um, at the end of the day, um, there is growth um, uh, of the, uh, uh, this industry. On the, on the issues that have got to, we, we have got to deal with um, at national level, there are issues of biosecurity that we have got to deal with, and there are issues around market access that we have got to deal with. In the working groups that we have on the poultry master plan, we, are, we have started to um, ensure that we support these uh, areas, especially uh, around those issues that have got to deal with biosecurity and also the issues around uh, residue monitoring in the poultry industry. Um, and that would also deal with the issue that uh, Honorable Nguenya had raised on the, uh, the sourcing of poultry for the country in terms of preferential procurement that government has um, uh, uh, for our smallholder farmers. Honorable Bibi, um, the issues around climate change, as you have raised, the department has got um, the climate change adaptation and mitigation strategies, which are an offshoot of um, the Paris Agreement. We participate as a department, our experts um, who are within program two are fully participating. We take your point in terms of crop suitability, but the adaptive strategies that uh, we highlight would also deal with uh, livestock because um, we cannot leave livestock as it is the biggest uh, uh, industry in uh, the agriculture. On the issues of FMD, yes, the three provinces, um, Limpopo, um, KZN and Pumalanga, we are currently engaged in strategies of regaining our FMD uh, freedom um, through the OIE, but it will take time because of the uh, last uh, outbreak that we had in January 2020 in Limpopo. Um, the, the is a question that was asked by Honorable Yambi, and I cannot agree more in terms of bringing into focus the uh, perspective of the provinces um, on, on, on to the select committee for a better engagement and also a better oversight. Honorable Chair, you have asked about the, the national seed banks. Yes, um, the department, the ERC, um, the uh, Department of Environment, uh, Forestry and Fisheries, all of those in terms of having national seed banks um, conserving um, the seeds that we are having. The department has also started a program of coming up with community seed banks. We launched one in Northwest last year and um, it's going very well. And um, we are registering new varieties because of uh, adaptation. Um, there's always something new, whether it's uh, in terms of adaptation, it, whether it's also in terms of the needs of the market or even uh, the consumers. Then we have got to adapt, come up with new varieties and they are all protected in terms of the Plant Improvement Act and also in terms of the um, uh, uh, plant uh, breeders rights uh, act yes i have answered in terms of the poultry scheme uh, and how we are addressing this um, from a departmental level we we run it in concurrence 
with Kauna Fazuedu Komo, where we go into um, communities, get um, and uh, inculcate a sense of um, breeding with our indigenous um, poultry so that we can maximize in terms of poultry as the easiest source of uh, livestock protein that we can get from the communities. Um, honorable chair and honorable members that would conclude the questions that I have in front of me. I have not uh, done um, the issue around the, um, specifically on the Mahobas Tlof uh, tea. I will have to get information and share with the uh, uh, portfolio committee as will the issue around the cooperatives, which we have, but the, the, the question that was asked was deeper than um, at the superficial level. On the budget issues, um, the CFO had uh, indicated the budget uh, um, outline um, in terms of the different areas, in terms of the intense presentation that she had given. Thank you very much, honorable chair and honorable members. I will then hand over to honorable minister to conclude on the areas that I might have, uh, me and the colleagues might have not uh, given attention to. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Masodi, and thank you, Chairperson and members. I think the department have done justice on a number of issues. Safe to say that on the issue of rural safety, we actually have developed a rural safety strategy working with the Department of Safety and Security. We've made a, a report and the IMC continuously follows up when we have meetings on the Interministerial Committee on Land Shape by the Deputy President, because this is one issue which we collectively agree that it is important to address to make sure that we protect both our farmers, our farm workers and rural masses against, you know, the violence that sometimes is experienced in these areas, the loss of their stock, which affect their income as well as their livelihood. So it's a matter that we are continuously uh, engaged with because it remains important, not only for those rural communities, but also for the country as a whole in terms of economic development. On the issue of agri-parks, it is a matter which, as uh, uh, Dr. Ndai has actually responded to, that we are addressing. But I must say that in the construct of the agri parks, one of the things that we have appreciated also working with the African Development Bank is the need for attracting private sector partnership in these uh, agri parks, be it the FPSU and others in the entirety of the value chain. We appreciate that, yes, the concept remains relevant and important, but we need to enhance and correct where there might have been mistakes in the implementation of such a program. With regards to the export uh, challenges, these are the matters that we will take upon and maybe if uh, Honorable Smith can give us the details so that we can pick it up with my colleague in Mozambique, but also with the DTIC, so that if there's any intervention that we require, we can be able to do so. On a number of issues, uh, the team has responded. I would like to say thank you very much uh, once again, Chairperson and members. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister and your team. Uh, I'll give back to you to give us the closing remarks. Members, if you do have follow-up questions, you put in writing and then we'll send to the department uh, that will respond in writing. Honorable Minister. No, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Modisa. I know you have uh, had a long day with a number of us uh, coming to present and you having to internalize and process what we say. I must say that we remain committed in making sure that we undertake our responsibility as the executive and administration. And time and again, we find comfort in the engagement with yourselves as you represent uh, the broader stakeholders in holding us accountable on the things that we have committed 
as government to do. And I hope that when we come to the issue of the budget debate, we'll also be able to take on the point that was raised by Honorable Nyambi, that given that the NCOP is the House of Parliament that really deals with uh, provincial and municipal matters in the main, such that our budget debate, while it may be global as a national department, but we must also focus more emphasis on what we are doing at the provincial level, working with the department, and also in those functions that are not uh, national, um, are not uh, concurrent functions, how, do, how does our work rather impact positively in the growth of those provinces and municipal areas? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister and your team. And let me take this opportunity to thank uh, our co my colleagues, our officials for being in the meeting for until this time. We really uh, appreciated your commitment until such time we meet again, uh, go and rest and prepare. And the department, Minister, go back to your department and go and implement. We need an implementation and go and put the, your systems in place to make sure that uh, there is a value for money and to make sure that um, all those things that you have planned, uh, they are going according to your plan. Thank you very much, but we, are, we know that you, it will happen under your leadership. It will happen. Thank you very much. This meeting is officially closed. Uh, oh, uh, oh hey, by the way. The oh, the oh, no. Uh, department, we can, we can release you, department. Uh, <laughs> Members, can you remain for five minutes? Aska will nearly kill me. Uh, Aska uh, will nearly Aska kill is me. punishing. Okay. <laughs> Aska. Smith. I'm ready for the next department. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, the another department is coming. Uh, you Aska? are fresh. I could see you. <laughs> Uh, Aska, uh, Aska, uh, the last uh, item, which is uh, the minutes of 13 April, it's been 13 April. All. It's been did you send members? Yes, chair. Did, did the uh, members receive the minutes of the 13? It was 13 yes, April. Did, yes, we did. Yes, we did. yes chairperson, yes, we do have. Any corrections, members? No questions. Corrections? No, Chair. OK. So I put the uh, before you members of the committee for adoption of the minutes. Lindway PB move for the adoption of the minutes, Chairperson. Any second? Honorable Nguenya move, uh, uh, second the minutes, Chair. No, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, I think this is the last item. Is it the last item on uh, uh, Mr. Bauer? Yes, 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 yes. Person, it's the last item. Okay. <clears throat> Members, I uh, would like to thank you for being there in the meeting and participating. Thank you very much. Go back home, drive safe, <laughs> and uh, lunch is on our budget. Uh, whatever thank you are going to eat, I mean, <laughs> uh, dinner. Whatever you are going you to make, you must miss, know that you miss, <laughs> you miss Cape Town. <laughs> Good night. Whatever you are eating, you know that it's uh, from the parliament. 